Jeeva Guni Ushlar, Sakaja Tal, Fajarov, Safarka Dugan, Bail on a Slow, we're on Donog Shaw. Good day, everybody, and you're very welcome to join us here at the Duggan Park in Bandeslow on this November Sunday for the 2009 County Intermediate Hurling Championship Final, and that between Mili Gercourt and Tina Abby Denari. Well, Tina. Abby Denari are having their photograph taken right now. They, of course, are in the green and the blue. And here's their team. In goals, number one, Kevin Devine. Number two, Noel Finnerty. Number three, Liam Hodgins. Number four, Paul Gordon. Five, Mark uh, Gordon. Six, the centre-back, Carol Kavanagh. And Pori Shield wears number seven. In midfield, it's the Burks. Number eight, Anthony. And number nine, Ger. The half-forward line, ten and is Ronan Madden. Eleven at centre-forward, John Shield. And Colin Larkin wears 12 at left half. 13 top of the right is Brian Cunningham. 14 on the fringe of the square. The full forward, Declan Donnelly. And Mial Durban wears 15 at top of the left. And the panel consists of Brian Roach, Paddy McHugo, Kevin Maloney, Kevin Broderick, John Brahaney, Declan Power, Andy Burke, Corey uh, Robinson, and Michael Bruder. The management is made up of Matty Kenny, uh, Tom Abel, Tom Brahaney, Jerry Madden, Tom Maloney, and PJ Kenny. And the first aid is provided by Tom Burke. And the Dannon will appear in the Shearwater Hotel on November the 20th. Tickets are available in the Shearwater Hotel on town and usual Joe Kelly's and usual outlets in throughout Ballas. So, guaranteed good night's entertainment, which goes with some fantastic singers and top quality names Frankie Gavin, Dolores Kane, the Dannon, the Shearwater Hotel on the 20th of November. Well, Mealy Court, of course, are in there. Traditional colours of the blue with the white sash. They're coming to the stool right now. They're coming there to have their photograph taken. And we'll look down at the programme and we'll give you their team line-out. In goals is the team captain, Damien Howe, the number one. Two is Justin Flynn. Three at fullback, Peter Stones. Mark McCormack wears number four. Five at right half-back is Ronan Larkin. Six at centre-back is Martin Larkin. And seven at left half-back is Mark Ryan. In centre field, eight is Jeremy Dunn. And number nine is Martin Corcoran. Ten at right half-forward is Sean McCormack. On the 40, the number 11, Rory McGorn. And 12 at left half-forward is Niall Lynch. 13 at top of the right is uh, Brendan Lucas. 14 at full forward, Noel Kinney. And Kevin Morden wears 15 at top of the left. And they have a long list on the panel. And they are uh, Pori Hogan, Anthony Dunn, Patrick. Rick Ryan, John Narkin, Aidan Tracy, Trevor Morden, Damien Dunn, Shane Feehan, Mark Dunn, Daniel Hogan, Sean Dolan, Damien McDermott, Noel Hogan, Martin Hogan, Ronan Hines, Kenneth Lines, Michael O'Brien, Patrick Lynch, Brendan Lynch, Michael Narkin, Dara Killian, and David O'Leary. And when he's at a big deep breath for that. And the manager is Seamus uh, Ogie Morden. We better include the Ogie. The selectors are Mike Murray, Brendan Flannery, and uh, Brian Dolly. Uh, medical is provided by Dr. Niall McGordon. Kitman is Jody McAvoy and Richard Ford. And Waterman is uh, Bernard McDermott. Well, the referee for the county final comes from the Sarsfields Club. And that's him over on the far side of the field. The name is Tommy Fox. Tina Abby Denary down the scoreboard side of the field. They're in the huddle at the minute. And what a day it is for these young lads and experienced lads as well of Tina Abby Denary in uh, the county decider against their East Galway opponents of the day. Mealy Gercourt and last words of advice and encouragement coming there right now in the huddle. And I suppose if we talk about Teen Abbey Denari in the huddle, maybe we should do likewise for Medic Aircourt. They are down to our right, the town end of the pitch. Their captain is Damien Howe, and he's a good man to talk, and he's in the middle at the minute. <laughs>
very special indeed are on the bean and it's a great moment uh, for the clubs of Mealy Court and uh, Teen Abinari listening to are on the bean on the day that they take their place in the 2009 County Intermediate Final and uh, the winners take all of course in 2009 it's so different from the uh, couple of years gone by in that uh, the two teams that reached the County Final went up senior the coming year but uh, this year is totally different in uh, that uh, only the winners uh, go through and only the winners are promoted to the senior ranks as the tension is high the action is on and it is uh, the near neighbours and it is uh, Ger Burke Ger Burke uh, surrounded but uh, swings the ball out into open space on the far side of the field going out there to meet it is uh, Michal Jervin Jervin swings it in from Ger Burke's attack Jervin over the bar Tina with an early lead right at the beginning of the game over the bar one point you could say almost from the throw-in only 25 seconds gone when that point was sent between the posts by Mial Darvin and uh, T. Navi Denari are helped by whatever win there is in the first half as Martin Corcoran sends it up here on the near side of the field. We're looking for switches, we're looking at uh, uh, Barney. Uh, but Barney Lucas leaves that ball behind and is cleared away by Noel Fierty. The very experience returned though quickly up towards the scraper. The scraper trying to hold on to it, but uh, it lands on the ground. It's uh, Right now, a pile-up situation. Niall Lynch trying to win it for Mealy Kirkwood. Surrounded. Niall Lynch, though. The Tommy Fox says, hold on, too long. Takes too many steps. Three out two. Tina Bidenari. <coughs> the free will be taken by the very, very experienced fullback. That's uh, Hodgey, as he's well known. Liam Hodgins. Checking his helmet. And now Haji stands over the free. Looking for movement from the forwards. He goes right down the middle instead. Huge long ball. Damien Howe stands the ball. Is in front of the post. Overran by Peter Stones. He's anxious, it's early, and it's Tina Bidanari with a chance with Damien Howe with a great save as the effort, the chance was there for Ronan Madden, but uh, Damien Howe, the captain, stood strong and deflected over the bar, and Tina Bidanari lead by two. Well, just looking round, I think, uh, well... That's uh, Brian Cunningham wearing tin since he's playing in, in the number 13 position. Number 14 on the side, Declan Donnelly seems to be out on the 40. Number 11, John Shields seems to be playing at right half forward. That's in the Tina attack, Tina Abidonari attack. As uh, there is a line ball on the far side of the field. As uh, the referee is, of course, uh, Tommy Fox, and uh, it's the ball out to Mealy Kirkcourt. Ronan. Larkin is their wing back. Very tall guys. And uh, this uh, seam as it's topped there by Ronan Larkin and it's uh, out into the centre of the field. One there for Mealy Kirkcourt. Defending it is uh, the number six. The number six is Carol Kavanagh. Kavanagh changes the point of the play. Tries to play uh, Brian Cunningham on the near side of the field but won by Mark McCormack. Mark McCormack trying to jink him his way out of trouble there. Took a knock as he was trying to work his way out of trouble. But there is a free out to Mealy Kirkcourt. Mark McCormack is made of uh, sturdy stuff and he has won the free out for his captain Damien Howe to take. Damien who has already made a huge contribution when uh, the chance was on for a goal. He deflected it over the bar and right now it's a lowish type of free. I think he didn't hit that one all that well. Won by Jeremy Dunn but it goes astray and it's picked up by Ger Burke uh, defending back there. Working, helping out his halfback line. Brooks seems to hold on a long time, but uh, now it's uh, out a goal from Carol Cavan out to the centre of the field. Eirko trying to play a first time ball, trying to settle into the game. Out comes uh, the wing back, Porig Shield, and Porig Shield turns defence into attack. A long ball in over the head of uh, the uh, full forward that allows uh, Peter Stones to go back. Peter Stones under pressure there, under severe pressure there from uh, the number 13, uh, Brian Cunningham, as uh, it is. Uh, Aircourt trying to come out 
under huge pressure once again as Peter Stone gets it out over the sideline this time and it's a line ball for Tina Abbey Denairi Tommy Fox has gone in and uh, is uh, consulted in there with uh, the linesman on the far side of the field and it, uh, he's calling you see the Midic Aircourt uh, defender and is there an early card here? Would like uh, would appear there is, and it looks like it's the fullback Peter Stones. Very early in the game, only five minutes gone, and a yellow card for the Munich Airport fullback Peter Stones. <laughs> Didn't really see what happened over there, but we do see the free, and it's Brian Cunningham that sends it in and. Uh, What's the signal there from uh, the umpire? I think it's wide. Well, it was a very tight angle there. And it went across the go mark, Damien Howe. All his might and power and strength in that puck out. It's uh, Niall Lynch that wins it from the puck out. Going across field, Niall Lynch blocked down. Barney Lucas trying to pick it up. Nice sidestep. The hand passer goes across. Jeremy Dunn is up in attack. Jeremy Dunn has a chance. Jeremy Dunn high from Jeremy Dunn. And the midfielder, Jeremy Dunn, has put it over for Munich Aircourt. <laughs> Jeremy Dunn got away from his marker there to go up and support the forwards, to take the pass, to put it between the posts for two points to one. And the very experienced, two right good experienced goalkeepers. Well, the one there is, uh, of course, Kevin Devine. Huge ball, one in the heart of the Midic Air Court defence. And the ball swung out uh, by Martin Larkin. Martin Larkin, not the tallest of centre backs, but a very uh, fine hurler. On, in it goes to the corner. Over there, attacking the ball is uh, Michal Durban. The referee must uh, step in once again. And uh, it'll over anxious once again is a Munich Air Court defender and maybe is there a second Munich Air Court defender no well it looked like uh, that he might be going to go into the book there but I think Tommy Fox has just given a caution there to the Munich Air Court wing back well Michal uh, Dervin certainly working hard in the early stages took a great point and wins the free right there Players, of course, trying to settle into the game. And they know each other quite well. And there's a huge crowd here at the Duggan Park in Banlaslaw on a beautiful day. And certainly the hurling board will be very grateful for conditions like this. And the ball has swung in high and swung up and over the bar. Well taken from a very awkward angle. And Brian Cunningham with the point. Brian, the number 13. And Damien Howe, would you believe the sun is in his eyes, as is it in his uh, defenders and, of course, the Tina attackers. Playing very deep is John Shield, swinging that ball through the centre. Air Court having to, Munich Air Court having to go back. Out goes uh, a weakish type of clearance, and it's picked up for Tina Abbey Denari. It's picked up by the number 14 on the run. This is a well-worked effort, but it goes for, from Declan Donnelly to the left. Well, he done all the hard work quite easily, but then, well, be disappointed with the finish. As there seems to be switches in the De Milik Air Court defence, Mark McCormick seems to be going to the far side of the field. Justin Flynn coming over here to the stand side of the field. As Damien Howe slips, but still gets full and proper connection on the puck out and lands it up into the Tina Abitonari half of the field, where it goes out over the sideline. Line ball. Line ball on the far side of the field. Well, of course, uh, the county championship is the reward for the winning of uh, this uh, county final. But not alone is it the county championship, but senior status as well. As uh, there's tension early on, it's not uh, uh, dirty by any means, but uh, well, it's uh, free to Medic Aircourt and. Uh, 
Mark McCormack was swung around and uh, Tommy Fox has already issued a yellow card to the Minikirkert full back. He's talking, you see, with a couple of players at the minute and uh, perhaps, uh, well, there's certainly one yellow card. There's one perhaps for Mark McCormack and maybe also for Michal Durban. I think there is. Throw in ball and uh, in it goes low scoring so far three points to one and hasn't really opened up but uh, now it's Ronan Madden trying to open it up on the near side of the field rounding his marker going on a solo intended hand pass he probably could have gone himself but it's intercepted and out comes Billy Kirkgaard and away goes the ball landing in the center of the field Niall Lynch tries to bring it down won instead by the number eight the number eight is Anthony Burke Burke tries to swing it over to the far side of the field broken up on the far side of the field initially by Ronan Larkin but he's robbed and the ball is swung in high and swung up and over the bar from the number 12 and Callum Larkin has got his name on the scoreboard son of the county chairman Callum Larkin with that point or Tina Abbey Denary who leads by four points to one, a three points lead. Damien Howe is most definitely the busier of the two goalkeepers in the first uh, ten minutes of the game as the ball is swung in by Rory McGordon from the puck out. But Rory McGordon, well, it goes uh, to the left. Won easily enough by Rory McGordon, McGordon initially, but uh, well, couldn't put it between the posts. Kevin Devine got a huge... Uh, Distance on his first book out, she went down the middle, this time he's gone way over to the far side of the field and held by Declan Donnelly and Declan Donnelly swings it in, goes for it himself, but it goes to the left. Well, it was a great catch from Declan Donnelly, we just couldn't finish it off. Uh, he's out on the 40, wearing number 14, out on Martin Larkin with uh, number 13. Uh, Brian Cunningham playing in at full forward and Ronan Matten in at top of the right and Damien Howe swings it out and again it goes astray and John Sheil, where is he playing? Well, he seems to be out around the centre of the field as uh, the ball is uh, swung through the centre. Martin Larkin can't stop that one and out comes the number 13 to turn to his left, to swing it off the left, to swing it high but again to swing it uh, to the left and Brian Cunningham with that wide for Tina Abidinari. Well, both sides have yet to settle down, you get uh, the feeling. As uh, John Shield has won a few of the puck outs here on Mark Ryan on the, the near side of the field. This one, well, Damien Howell noticed that was happening. He went down the middle, but it's won again by Teen Abbey Denari. The Millie Kirkcourt puck out, this time by Ger Burke. A great catch, though, by Peter Stone. Down, tucked it from the clouds there. And a free out to Millie Kirkcourt. And Damien Howe will settle it all down. The experienced goalkeeper, mainly, predominantly in white. Takes the free very quickly, though. Just walked up and took it up and uh, tries to find uh, Kevin Morden. Kevin Morden here on the near side of the field. Gets inside from the quick free up from uh, Damien Howe. Kevin Morden over the bar. Great score for Millie Kerkort. Tina, Abby denied the fence, caught unawares. Damien Howe just seemed to be strolling up, seemed to be going to place the ball, but when he reached the ball, he just uh, took the free immediately, and Kevin Morden was alert to it to put it between the posts, and as I say, it's four points to two, and Tina Abby Denari going for a score for down at the other end of the field, but another wide for Tina Abby Denari. Four wides already. And, uh, you know, we played only 14 minutes in that first half. Low scoring so far. As Damien Howe will go over the far side of the field with this one. Landing inside at 18, Abby Denari, 65. One by Mili Kierkegaard, doesn't go very far. And it is Teen Abby Denari attacking. Peter Stones stops that attack. Martin Nacken clears it. And the ball lands here in front of us. Tried to be flicked on there by Jeremy Dunn, but picked up instead by Anthony Burke. And Anthony Burke, nice short grip of the stick. Out comes Peter Stones. 
Out comes Brian Cunningham. Back goes Martin Larkin. The clearance goes out from the centre back to number six. Swing it out to the centre of the field where Ger Burke is first to react. He's hooked on the far side of the field. Two Millie Kercourt players in. The ball played along the ground. Picked up and swung in for Millie Kercourt. High in towards uh, the Kevin Devine. But a swung over the bar. It goes all the way over the bar. And a great score for Millie Kercourt. And it was uh, Rory McGordon. Out in the, the number 11, out in the right half forward position. That was a fine point because he was out uh, on his own on the uh, Teen Abbey and 65 and almost uh, on the, the sideline as he swung that ball over the bar for a point to separate the sides. And the ball breaks for Ger Burke and Ger Burke lets the ball do the work. Out oh, coming to meet it is uh, the full forward, Brian Cunningham. Uh, Peter Stone stayed back and he may as well have stayed back because it's another wide. Well, certainly the Teen Abbey Denari forwards will need to settle down a bit. They're getting lots of ball. They are getting free of their markers at times, but they're hitting their efforts hurriedly. And, uh, well, they have already recorded five wides. Most of them to the left of the post. As, uh, it's a stalemate situation. The game hasn't really opened up so far. Right now, it is the scraper. The scraper hand passes it in. And it's, uh, once again, it looks like Jeremy Dunn that's up in support. Niall Lynch, Niall Lynch's uh, effort is blocked down. The scraper that was watching. The scraper gives it, uh, becomes the playmaker. Once again, into Kevin Morton. Kevin Morton swings it in. And Kevin Morton from scraper's pass puts it over the bar. Well, it was laboured a bit, but it was successful in the end. And Kevin Morton has already got a couple of points. And the teams are level at four points apiece. And 16 minutes and 45 seconds gone in the first half as the ball is through the centre. And it's uh, inside with Teen Abbey Denari trying to come through. Is Brian Cunningham trying to take it up? Forced out towards uh, the stand. Half intercepted, fully intercepted, cleared by Martin Narkin. And out goes the clearance, landing it out around the centre of the field. The ball is out over the sideline. And uh, we'll have to wait for a decision. Niall Lynch was under the ball. Anthony Burke was under it as well. And it would appear that it came off the day. Mealy Kercourt man for a Teen Abbey Denari sideline ball. Here's the sideline cut. Anthony Burke, the midfielder. Tries to find John Sheel. John Sheel. Well, he's lucky to get that free. He kind of uh, had overrun it, but, uh, well, tripped, and uh, is the result is it, and it's a free to Teen Abbey Denari. Right under the stand. And uh, their number 13, Brian Cunningham. Brian will take it. The stand is full. The terracing on the near side is almost full. Terracing down the road side quite a few people there and big attendance on the far side of the field as well good day as uh, for the hurling board as brian cunningham this time he finds the target from the place ball and tina Bidari go back in front and uh, brian cunningham with his second point damien howe five points to four here comes uh, damien howe and uh, again, the brawl breaks. It's on the 65 meter line. Comes favourably to, to Jeremy Dunn. Jeremy Dunn circles, then hand pass. And it's uh, Barney Lucas. Barney Lucas who picks up the hand pass. And Barney Lucas puts it to the right. Well, certainly, Brendan Lucas will be a little disappointed with that one. Good pass and a short uh, puck out. Waiting for it is the fullback Hodgie. And uh, Liam swings it over the far side of the field to the near side of the field. Pushing there by uh, John Shield And on Mark Ryan. And a free out to Medic Aircourt. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Damien Howe plays this one. He's coming to take it nice and slowly. This time he will have to place it because uh, cleverly uh, the Tina 
Abby Denier player plays it back towards them, though he has to place it, and it's uh, slowing it down now and places it short though. This time to Martin Larkin. Larkin goes for it. Long is going to drop short. The go up, broken down by Rory McGordon. Picked up by Barney Lucas. Again, he's blocked down. It's close to the sideline here, the near side of the field. Paul Gordon tried to defend there for Team Abby Denari. Pretends to go to the right, goes to the left. Clears it out to John Shield, who catches. John Shield playing very, very deep. Swings a long ball down. Read by Ronan Larkin on the far side of the field and hurled away by Ronan Larkin. Niall Lynch goes up. The ball breaks here towards the sideline, the near side of the field. It goes out over the sideline. And uh, the linesman here on the near side of the field has the flag up. Gone 20 minutes in the first half. Five points to four. Won the difference. The county championship and senior status. For the winners, as it's won by Mark Ryan. Great catch back there by the wing back. The wing back is uh, cleared away by Mark uh, Gordon. Down it goes, the sand side of the field. Peter Stones, tall player, difficulty in taking it up. And uh, the ball is over the sideline. And uh, the signal would appear that it is uh, Vinnie Kirkcourt. Out to them, Mark Ryan to take. Barney Lucas is roving. Mark Ryan is striking up in the direction of uh, Brendan Lucas, but he breaks it down only as far as Declan Donnelly. His effort is blocked down, following back all the time as Barney Lucas. Lucas puts the, uh, the ball on the hurley and swings a quick ball over to the far side of the field. All alone in the centre of the field is Ger Burke. Ger Burke a low ball, but misdirects that one, and Martin Larkin, a bit slowed in. He was trying to find his man, he was hooked, but it works out well as Ronan Larkin clears it. Ronan Larkin, great catch back there, and it is hot in the full, a great catch here on the near side of the field, and a free out uh, to Tina Abbey and it was Paul Gordon with a great catch. Quickly taken, and... Uh, is Tommy Fox uh, happy to continue with the play? He is up uh, for Brian Cunningham. Brian Cunningham circles, strikes. Cunningham on the run and over the bar from Brian Cunningham. Three points now for Brian Cunningham. A point for Michal Dervin, a point for Colin Larkin, and a point for Ronan Madden. That's our 14 Abbey Denari. Jeremy Dunn, the midfielder from Elik Aircourt. A point uh, also for Rory McGorn and two for Kevin Morden. That's uh, Elik Aircourt's total as uh, Jeremy Dunn plays it out to Martin Corkin in the centre of the field. Miss hits that one and Tina Abbey Denari. With hooking going in from Niall Lynch. Niall Lynch is surrounded by a couple of players, can't release the ball. Mark uh, Ryan comes in to help, but Noel Finnerty spots the danger, and Noel Finnerty the ball out over the sideline on the near side of the field. A lot of ball, a lot of sideline cuts here, particularly on the near side of the field. Kane is going, uh, Teen Abbey Denari's way, and the midfielder, Anthony Burke. Anthony Burke looks up, strikes a nice ball down the stand side once again. Well, once again, the target is uh, Brian Cunningham. And great vision from Brian Cunningham to play it across to Ronan Madden. One marked on the far side of the field momentarily. Now strikes from Ronan Madden. And Ronan Madden from the pass from Brian Cunningham. Ronan, Ronan Madden, Madden takes full advantage to put it over the bar. Ronan Madden seems to be gone over to the far side of the field. There's more switches in the, the Teen Abbey Denari attack. They're moving around their forwards. Brian Cunningham has gone to top of the right. Michal Durbin has gone to full forward. Ronan Metton has gone over to the far side. And uh, I think a Mealy Kerkor player seems to be going off. As, uh, well, disappointment there for Mealy Kerkor. And is it Ronan Justin Flynn that has gone off? I'm not absolutely sure. But Ronan Larkin, yes, it is Justin Flynn that's gone off. As, uh, well, a couple of players getting to know each other here on the near side of the field as uh, the ball is uh, swung away out over the sideline on the far side of the field and it is a line ball. Well, Justin Flynn and is it number 17 that has come in? Number 17 is Anthony Dunn. Big loss to Mili Kerkort, Justin Flynn, well, maybe. Well, certainly he's gone off and Anthony Dunn is the player that has replaced him.
Well, certainly. Decision there, taken there over on the far side of the field by Mili Kirkwood early in the game as Barney Lucas swings that uh, sideline ball. It breaks along the ground. A chance here for Mili Kirkwood, the scraper. The scraper is surrounded, though, by, especially by uh, Hodgie, the experienced Hodgie, and uh, the ball goes out over the end line. Well, Noel Kinney really had nowhere to go there. Liam Hodgins showing you all his experience at fullback. As uh, it is uh, a player on the scoreboard, seven points to four. Kevin Devine, we look at the watch, 25 minutes and 40 seconds gone in uh, the first half. And, well, very little continuity so far in uh, that uh, uh, play as, uh, well, as another sideline ball. And we've seen a lot of them here especially, as I said, on the near side of the field. This time it's out uh, to Mili Kirkcourt, and it's Mark Ryan. And a great one up from Mark Ryan. And uh, beats uh, Noel Finnerty initially. Had the time to go back for it. Helped out by Paul Gordon. And Paul Gordon hurls it away for Tina Abinari, who seems to be that little bit the better team so far. And uh, Brian Cunningham, he's caught in an awful lot of problems. Brian Cunningham has a great turn of pace. And uh, what's the decision here on the near side of the field? Is it a... Free out to Millie Kerkort, I think it is. Well, I'm not sure it's a free out, it's a sideline cut. I think it's a sideline cut. And Mark Ryan wants players back. Uh, Tommy Fox wants players uh, back from the ball as Mark Ryan takes it. Held by Rory McGordon. Rory McGordon, two man full forward line at the minute for Millie Kerkort. The scraper and uh, Haji. Haji is strong. The ball breaks here to the near side of the field. Still going nowhere. Going back is Carol Kavanagh. Carol, little off balance. Pulls out towards his own 65 metre line. Two Mili Kerkor players. One of them is Niall Lynch. But uh, his in intended hand pass is intercepted. And uh, Tina Bidinari are attacking. First touch of Mark Ryan lets them down. He needs support from Martin Corkin, who gives him that support. But it uh, goes astray. And, uh, well, Aircourt seems to be, Mili Kerkort seems to be using extra players out around the centre of the field. And uh, as a result, uh, Tina Abidinari seems to have an extra player in around the full back line. As the latest uh, Tina Abidinari attack is broken up by Ronan Larkin. Larkin over here to the near centre of the field. Great catch by the scraper, the scraper. Loses the ball though, leaves it behind and Carol Kavanagh clears for Tina Abidinari. Broken down by Peter Stones. Picked up by, well initially by Martin well, Larkin, left behind. And now it is uh, Tina Abidinari. And uh, the substitute is in and Anthony Dunn clears it out to the centre of the field. Sidestep away from trouble from Martin Cochran, but only half hits that ball and Haji comes out. Haji Hen lays it out to Carol Cavan through Jerbrook. Jerbrook a long ball, lets the ball do the work. Damien Howe comes out. Damien Howe has possession. Hand passes across to the near side of the field. Anthony Dunn has to go back. Goes back successfully, turns to his favourite right hand side. But well, what does he do with it then? Hurls it out over the sideline right here in front of us. Another line ball on the near side of the field. There's a line ball on the near side of the field. And uh, we look at the watch. There's 28 and a half minutes gone in at the first half. Very low scoring, seven points to four. Tina Abidinari having the better of that first half, not just on the scoreboard, getting more possession as well. This time the effort from the sideline goes astray and uh, Mark Ryan as he came out, uh, he was tackled as he came out, now it was all unintentional. It was really accidental, I think, more than anything else, but uh, I think one of the Tina Abidinari players will still, well, his name will go into the book and perhaps a yellow card, and it will indeed, and it goes uh, to John Shield, the number 11. The free to Millie Kerkort and to Brendan Lucas. Brendan, well, certainly seems to be an accurate one from Brendan Lucas. It is an accurate one from Brendan Lucas, and it's over the bar for an Aircourt point. Had to wait a while for it, but now this has come from Barney Lucas. To narrow the gap to just two points, seven to five, and 29 minutes and 50 seconds gone in the first half. 
Way goes the puck out. Certainly, once again, Teen Abbey Denari doing well from the puck out. Colin Larkin, Colin Larkin, rising into the corner, broken up in there, and the clearance goes out. Well, the pitch doesn't seem to be big enough for those players here. Certainly wide enough uh, for those players. That's another sideline ball, this time on the far side of the field. To be fair to the players, they're trying to open up the play. They're trying to play it wide. But, uh, as I said, quite a bit of sideline cut as uh, the ball is swung in. And once again, looks like uh, Ronan Larkin. One year there. Martin Corcoran trying to win the ball. He goes down on the ball. Maybe push down there as well. I think what Tommy Fox will do will throw it in. He will indeed, and we have... 40 seconds of additional time played. It's a great ground ball swung up for Millie Kirkcourt. The scraper is about to turn. The scraper is, uh, comes inside, gets inside Haji, turns, balances, strikes, and the scraper has sent it wide. And five wise each, and I think Tommy Fox will call for the ball. Uh, from Kevin Devine, he will indeed, it's half time, very low scoring uh, uh, game so far, there was chances to both sides, that five wides apiece, the wides for Teen Abedinari came earlier in the half, Mili Gerkort, uh, well wides built up late in uh, the first half, there's two points of difference, and Teen Abedinari has that advantage, the lead by two, by seven points to Mili Gerkort's five, and as the players go to the dressing room, we'll take a little break as well, we'll have the second half coming up for you in a short while. August uh, top watcher over Rasa Parker Dugan on scorer left Tom Tina Bidinari shocked a pincher really to knock the cool pincher top Tina Bidinari uh, go pincher Kuntosi August Nish on Dalalat and you're welcome back to the second half here at the Duggan Park in Bandeslow and it's all to be played for now it is of course uh, 30 minutes or so remaining and John Brehany seems to be have come into the Teen Abbey Denari uh, side. John, who suffered injury a few weeks ago, good to see him back out on the field to play as Teen Abbey Denari are uh, swung into the attack. And uh, Ronan Madden, a difficulty in taking on that ball. He has it now. Ronan Madden still has it. Ronan Madden turns, twists, strikes, and scores. And Teen Abbey Denari draw first blood in uh, their first half. It's good to see John Brahney back. Out. Uh, on the field of play, back in the action, the county minor earlier in the year, of course, uh, talk of uh, county minors, uh, Trevor Morden, son of Ogie, he suffered a, a well, injury as well, for coming back from a match, and uh, well, I think he's available to come on maybe at some stage here today, maybe we'll see Trevor Morden as well, maybe we'll see uh, someone like uh, the great Kevin Broderick as well in the action before the day is out, as uh, it is Ger Burke, Ger Burke, trying to clear that ball out, uh, it's stopped on the far side of the field. I'm sure the management on both sides has uh, said to some players at least, uh, you haven't done so far, so much so far in the game, there's more in you. That's right, now it's Barney Lucas. Barney Lucas plays an outfield. Following up is Niall Lynch, but Niall Lynch was uh, very slow and winding up. He was blocked down and he needs support and he's uh, coming in to help him to take uh, the score. It was uh, Sean McCormack, it looks like he had number 10. Yes, it was, Sean McCormack. Here, gets the point. Well, Mili Kirkcourt really lucky to get that score. Niall Lynch uh, took a lot out of the ball when he got that pass, and he was lucky that Sean McCormack stepped in to pick it up and uh, pointed for eight points to six, and uh, this long ball lands down into the centre of the field. John Brahney, who is he coming for? Is it Anthony Burke? Yeah, it looks like the Kevin Broderick. Talk about Bra. Bra seems to be into the game as well in uh, the Teen Abbey Denari attack. What valuable players uh, uh, to come into your side. Great catch in the far side of the field. This, your field, will open up as the game goes on. Niall Lynch swings it in, but he's very... He puts it over the bar. It was absolutely... It was worth it in that score. It was a deserving of the score because it was a wonderful catch from Niall Lynch and over the bar. And just one point uh, separating uh, the sides. As the long ball from Kevin Devine swung over on the far side of the field. Dickton Donnelly trying to get involved. Anthony Dunn clears out for Milik Aircourt. The ball swung far side of the field. 
as uh, it is uh, the scraper Noel Kinney showing all his experience but uh, sells it as short a kind of to Jeremy Dunn he has to go back for it and that allows Tina to group around him and Tina be done to Ger Brock swings that forward down towards Brian Cunningham he seems to be a main threat up there in uh, that attack with, along with Ronan Madden who has scored three points Ronan Madden beaten to this one Cleared out by Mark Ryan, picked up and cleared further by uh, Martin Cochran. One Martin to the other. That goes to go all the way out over the inline, though, and it's gone wide. Martin Cochran didn't give his inside eye really any chance at that one, and it went uh, swung way out over the inline, as I said, and uh, wide. Of course, T. Nabby Denari have those uh, young lads that were members of the county. Uh, team that all Ireland successful sides people like Shane Maloney and Pardig Brahney coming through in their ranks as well as uh, it is De Bra once again and certainly he this time he hand passes but where did he hand passes right into the Milik Aircourt man the Milik Aircourt man was Peter Stones and Stones the ball is a sideline ball it's a linesman ball on the far side of the field and uh, it is out uh, to Teen Abbey Denary and Noel Finnerty was anxious to take it early on, but uh, he has changed his mind. And uh, nobody in a hurry to take it now. Well, nobody, as I said, really wants to take the sideline ball. And uh, eventually Paul Gordon has made up the minds of others. He has come across and he'll take it. And the very tall number four, Paul Gordon... Well, I think it uh, looks like maybe Anthony Burke might be one of the uh, players that has gone off uh, the Teen Abbey Denary side as Paul Gordon took far too much time in uh, taking that sideline ball and uh, for delaying time, Tommy Fox throws it in, rightly so, and now it is a line ball. And will Paul Gordon uh, take it this time? He will, and I'm sure he'll hurry it up a little as well in the placing of it. Paul Gordon is going to take it that bit faster. Lowish type of cut. Walks out. Comes to Gerbrook. Gerbrook. Low ball. Intercepted by Martin Corcoran. He has hits it badly. And Teen Abedinari are attacking. And the ball is in the near side of the field. Taken in here by Michal Dervin. Dervin taking on Mark McCormack. Going into the corner. Still going. Surely dragged to the ground. Has Tommy Fox blown? I think he has. Good work there from Michal Dervin to draw the tackle, draw the foul, win the free, and Brian Cunningham will stand over it. Brian, cute angle enough on the near side of the field. Eight points to seven as of now. Will it be nine seven from this Brian Cunningham effort? Crouches down over, takes it up. Connects properly and puts it between the posts and another point for Brian Cunningham. Four now for the number 13. And I think Tina Abitinari have made another substitution. Well, they're certainly not afraid to make the calls on the sideline. Kevin Maloney perhaps is the player that has come in. And I think it might be Mark Gordon that's gone off as they are attacking John Shields seems to have gone off uh, but to appear to be on the field of play as uh, either a number 11 he got of course a yellow card late into the first half so Tina Abidinari, their management of Matty Kinney of uh, Tom Abel, Tom Brahney, Jerry Madden, Tom Maloney and PJ Kinney have made uh, three changes in the second half of that ball is swinging right in to the corner it goes right down towards the sideline towards the end line stalemate situation flicked out to Kevin Morton he took two great scores in the first half this time he's unlucky as he swings it to the left and it's, uh, seven wides now for Milik Aircourt so far Milik Aircourt scores has come from Jeremy Dunn Sean McCormack, all the half-forward line have scored. Sean McCormack, Roy McGorn, and uh, Niall uh, Lynch. 
Bernie Lucas from the place ball with a point. Kevin Morton with two from play. Uh, the ball is swung in by Kevin Broderick, but it goes this time to the left. Noel the scraper, Kenny, the only forward so far that hasn't scored for Billy Kerkort, for Teen Abbey Denier, Ronan Madden up there in the forwards with three points. Here comes a low ball inside. Talk about the scraper. He took his eye off it. Now he has it though, and the scraper circles out the field. He's uh, closed down though now, and the scraper is, uh, well, he has a lot of work now to try and get this ball. He took his eye off the ball when it came in and the chance is gone and Teen Abbey and Harry cleared their lines and Colin Rackin sends them attacking and Peter Stones has to defend. He defends well, gives it out to Mark McCormack. Mark McCormack gives it across to Anthony Dunn. Anthony Dunn put under pressure, gives it back to, Anthony McC to Mark uh, McCormack. Mark McCormack hurls it off his left-hand side into the centre of goals. R Rory McCormack, Rory McGordon trying to win that ball. Tommy Fox, I think, will throw it in. Talking about Ronan Madden with three points, Colm Shiel out there in the half hour line with a point as well, Brian Cunningham with four, Dicton Donnelly is yet to score, and Michal Jarvin of course got a nearly score as uh, John Brahaney comes attacking for Teen Abbey Denary, finds Michal Jarvin, great first touch, gets inside of Mark McCormack, McCormack is persistent but Jarvin has to strike, this from a tight angle from Michal Jarvin, yeah, a wonderful score, what a point from Michal Jarvin! Well, Mark McCormack did everything he could to try and stop the attacker, but Derman was the winner all the way. Great point, a three-point lead for Teen Abbey Denary. And the watch will show us there's almost ten minutes gone in uh, the second half. Here's a long ball down into the immediate air court half of the field. Missed uh, by Peter Stones. And then he tops it out over the sideline on the far side of the field. Line ball to Teen Abbey Denary. All in the upper hand from the throw-in. Seems to be winning that bit more possession. Lead by three points. And a sideline ball. And Ronan Madden. What a sideline cut from Ronan Madden. But it carries too far. The forwards can't get to it. This time it goes across the face of the goal mouth and out for their seventh wide. Damien Howe sends a long ball. Again, the target is Rory McGordon at centre forward. Rory McGordon wins it at centre forward. See Rory McGordon! Gives it out to the scraper. The scraper steps inside. The scraper finds the back of the net. Kevin Devine tried to throw it down, but the scraper won the day, and the scraper gets the goal. And 11 minutes into the second half, Billy Kierkegaard gets their first goal. And the first goal of the game, and it's a draw match. And the scraper has scored. And it's won seven to ten points, and now it's Teen Abbey Denary. Can they reply straight away? It's a point they can, and the point has come from Declan Donnelly. We're talking about players not scoring. We're talking about the scraper not uh, yet to get his name on the scoreboard. We're talking about Declan Donnelly. And the both are now on the scoreboard. Donnelly with the point. And Declan Donnelly, well, for his uh, efforts there and putting that, uh, well, ball between the posts, uh, took a knock for it, for his labours, and uh, he's getting attention right now. And there you have it, uh, Mealy Kerkort, 1-7, Teen Abbey Denary, 11 points. Well, Declan Donnelly... Well, you recover that bit quickly when you have scored a great point from play, and Declan Donnelly has recovered. And now it is uh, Damien Howe. Gives it lots of air and then and drives it down the far side of the field, trying to find the tall Martin Corcoran. Too tall to get down on that ball when it reached the ground, and he needs support from Kevin Morn. Gives it to Kevin Morn. He back to Sean McCormack. Sean McCormack off his left hand. What a score! Sean McCormack from play from 50 yards out. And a second point for Sean McCormack in the second half. As uh, here's Kevin Devine. And it's here on the near side of the field. And it's a line ball. And uh, the decision it is going up to our left. That means that it is 
a teen Abbey Denari ball and it's given up by uh, Ger Burke Ger Burke trying to find Michal Durban close attention all the time from uh, Mark McCormack at uh, the corner back and uh, Durban is forced to bring the ball out over the sideline good defence this time from McCormack the sideline ball out uh, to Mary Kirkwood in the 14th minute of the second half 16 minutes of normal time remaining 11 points to 11 points 1-8 to 11 points deadlocked here as they were at the beginning John Brehany picks it up John Brehany tries to place it places it to Colin Larkin he changes the point of the play from the near side of the field to the far side players to run on the far side of the field getting there first is the pacey Brian Cunningham Brian Cunningham evades his marker, gets away from his marker, what a score! The ball driven across by Colin Larkin, and uh, Brian Cunningham from the far side of the field beat Anthony Dunn, created space and got the point. And again it was from a tight angle, and T. Nabby Denari again to go in front as this long, long ball is driven forward, broken up there and cleared away by Hodgie and the ball, Mark McCormack out in front, well, it's Teen Abbey denied that win it. It's Declan Donnelly. He didn't look, and uh, Peter Stones clears a long ball down. The ball breaks in the centre of the field. One there, and hand pass here to the near side of the field. Pori Shield put under pressure. Pori Shield survives the pressure initially, but now is robbed, and away goes Niall Lynch. Niall Lynch, a very, very high ball. Niall Lynch landed in around the, the parallelogram in around the goal mouth in around the partner but it's picked up by the cornerback the cornerback is Noel Finnerty Finnerty gives it out to the far side of the field Teen Abbey Denari trying to win it Aircourt trying to get an equalising score Barney Lucas on the spin and Barney Lucas over the bar well you got the feeling that in the second half this game would open up remember the winners takes all in 2009. There's nothing for the losers other than intermediate hardly again in 2010. And it's uh, a aircourt opening up their shoulders at the moment. And Barney Lucas in particular. And Barney Lucas is on the run, looks at the post. This one drops in towards Kevin Morton. Kevin Morton drops it down. The ball is picked up though. And the cornerback is there in the right place at the right time. In fact, it was Haji. And Haji wins the free out under pressure for Tina Abbey Denari. He looked back at Sir Kevin Devine to know what he did. He want to take it. Devine says, "You take it yourself, Haji," and uh, he does. And out he goes with it. Up goes the hand of John Brahney, but over him uh, comes away with the ball is Martin Corkland. Corkland, soaring it in. The hand pass is so short. Jeremy Dunn was slow to react. Jerbrock read it and Jerbrock swung it down. And uh, Peter Stones covers up for for Anthony Dunn. Clears a weakish type of ball. Coming back to it is uh, Sean McCormack. Sean McCormack wins it and Sean McCormack turns the fence into attack. Up goes the hands of the Harley. In goes the ball. The scraper and Haji is there. They're getting to know each other. And, uh, well, there's uh, two aircourt players, I can tell you, on the ground at the minute. Well, Kevin Morton is one of them. And Kevin Morton is uh, back on his feet. What will Tommy Fox uh, do here? Tommy. Well, we'll have to wait for the decision of uh, the Rachor. The hand has gone up. And it would appear that he's signaling for a free in to Medic Airport. The teams are level at 1 9 to 12 points. Mealy Gerkort has the chance to go one clear. Barney Lucas with the place ball. Barney Lucas with the point and Gerkort lead. That's 18 minutes and 20 seconds into the second half. 110 to 12 points. Barney Lucas has now uh, three points. The ball lands here in front of us. Colin Larkin. Good block down on Colin Larkin. Oh, look, he was Rory McGordon as the ball goes out over the sideline for a line ball to Teen Abbey Denari. Ger Burke. He will take it. 
and he caught it off the left hand, Coney it in. Milica Court reacts with the ball top there on the near side of the field uh, by Martin Darkin. That's another sideline ball. Of course, we're in the 125th year of the association, and certainly it's very much a well and alive in Milica Court and in Tina Bidinari, 125 years on. As uh, Jer Burke this time tops it, but Colin Larkin picks it up. His effort is blocked down, breaks, comes back to Jer Burke. Jer Burke picks it up, and Jer Burke turns to his left. And then this is a dangerous ball in around the goal mouth. The hands go up, Dick and Don, his hand went up. But Mili Kirkwood come out with the ball. And Martin Larkin, the centre back. Martin Larkin steadies. Hins hurls up to the centre of the field, loose in the centre of the field. Well read by Party Shield. Puts it inside of Martin Corcoran, and that allows Tina Abidinari. And it looks like Brian Cunningham maybe to get an equaliser. In though, short, it falls short into the hand of uh, Damien Howe. And Damien Howe gets a long relieving clear. Down to Rory McGoran, the strong Rory. Gives the hand pass over to the far side of the field. Kicked on by Jeremy Dunn. Picked up by Barney Lucas. Barney Lucas. Hi, Barney Lucas over the bar. Another point for Barney Lucas. Well, certainly the backs seem to have the upper hand in the first half on both ends of the field. The forwards have opened up in the second half. Ronan Madden with three points uh, in total. As I said, Conum Larkin, five of the forwards of Tina Bidinari has scored. And uh, Jeremy Dunn in midfield. And all six of the Mealy Gearcourt forwards have scored. And uh, Tommy Fox will hold it up for just a moment. And the reason is this uh, injury to the Tina Abidinari attacker. Well, I think Tommy Fox is happy. And uh, while all that was happening, Declan Power, the number 22, has been introduced from the Tina Abidinari bench. He is a fourth substitute now that has been introduced. He's coming to the forward line as the scraper goes out. In front of his man, turns, looks at the post, strikes the scraper over the bar. Another point, and the scraper, Noel Kenny. He created so much space for himself to put that ball between the posts and Mili Kerkor to lead by it. that goal now. And that goal, of course, uh, coming uh, for them from the scraper himself in the 11th minute of that second half. 1-12 to 12 points. Great catch from the puck out. The hand pass out to Ger uh, Burke. Ger Burke turns. Ger Burke strikes. Braw is there. The Braw leaves it. And there's the free is in Tatina. The free has been won by Colm Larkin. The free to the right of the post. I'm sure Brian Cunningham will tap it over the bar. He will indeed and take his point and leave two between them. This one is going to go down to the wire. It's going to be a grandstand finish. It's 112 to 13 points and the players have still seven minutes of uh, normal time to play. And little additional to go with that. Here's uh, Damien Howe. On goes the puck out. A great catch by Paul Gordon. He gives it to Carol Kavanagh. Kavanagh puts it up into the Munich Airport half of the field. Won back there by Martin Larkin. Has difficulty in clearing it. Away comes uh, Tina Bidinari with possession. Brian Cunningham held on the far side of the field. Another free conceded. And uh, the one thing that uh, Ogie Moore and any selectors will not want at this stage is uh, freeze conceded by their defence because Brian Cunningham is so good from the place ball. And Brian Cunningham. This one 10 metres in from the sideline on the far side of the field. Acute angle on the 45 out. Brian Cunningham has the height, has the distance, has the accuracy. There's a point between them. Brian Cunningham with seven points. 
Ronan and Madden with three. That's 10 of their scores. Declan Donnelly with a point. That's 11 of their scores. Michal Durban with a two. That's 13 as the ball is swung in from the far side of the field and swung over. And I think it's Barney again. Barney Locals. Colm Larkin, of course, with the other point for Mealy Kirkcourt. Barney Lucas with that score is now five points. He certainly has opened up that uh, well, shoulders in the second half. And uh, no Kenny with 1-1. One, one. Kevin Morden with two first half points. Niall Lynch with a point. Sean McCormick with two second half points. Rory McGordon a point. And Jeremy Dunn as Jerb uh, Brooks lands, uh, launches another one in. And Jerb Brooks, the number nine, has launched it over the bar for Tina Bidinari. Well, it's score, first score now. It's uh, 113 to 15 points and 25 minutes and 40, uh, five, 25 minutes and 45 seconds gone in the second half. As the ball is driven up, is there a free from Mini Carcourt and the scrapper has won it. The experienced Noel Kenny with the free won by Noel Kenny, Barney Locust to take it. 113 to 15 points. One at a minute between them. Will Lucas put it over? Will he put two between them? <laughs> 26 minutes and 16 seconds gone. Here's Barney Lucas. He certainly is in a great second half. He has another point for Mini Garcourt. <laughs> and a very, very quickly taken puck out this time by Kevin Devine. He's in a rush, he's in a hurry. Hello by Martin Cochran. Martin Cochran, a huge ball down. Kevin Maloney trying to defend there for Mini Kirkcourt. It's on the 20 metre line. There's a pile up of players. Tommy Fox says, play on. And now, though, he has blown the whistle, he'll call it up and perhaps he'll throw it in. And there's an injury as well. And it's a. Uh, is it a uh, Hachi back there? A very, very experienced Teen Abbey Denari defender. And uh, certainly this hold up. Uh, well, Mili Kirkot had a little bit of momentum. Uh, they lead by 114, as I said, uh, to 15 points. Two points the difference, the watch will show us those 27 and a half minutes gone. And there's uh, Hodgins, it looks like, uh, Liam Hodgins seems to be still attended to down 20 metres out from his own goalposts. <laughs> well, Liam Hodgins is... Uh, Seems to be back, he seems to be all right, happy enough to resume, and Kevin Devine with the red top, the red jersey, taking uh, the free out for his side, Teen Abbey Denari. Gives it wonderful height, wonderful length, up goes the hand, the ball breaks, and it's held by John Brahaney. John Brahaney's intercepted by Ronan Larkin. Ronan Larkin, that's a vital interception as Brahaney tried to play it to a colleague. Out it goes, the scraper attacks it. The scraper tries to work his way inside the number 18 who has come in, Paddy McHugo. 14 Abbey Denari as the ball goes out over the sideline. Comes off the Vedic Air Court player with a pair and Parik Shield takes the ball. And he's going to swing out uh, the sideline cut from the stand side of the field. 29 minutes gone in the county final. It's the sideline cut from Porrig Shield. The Braw attacks it. Fighting to defend it there is Martin Cochran. A stalemate situation. The Braw picks it up. The Braw leaves it behind. But I think Tommy Fox deemed that he was fouled. Or has he? No. In fact, it's a free going Millie Gercourt's way. Well, I couldn't see what happened there. And there is a free. This free to Mealy Gercourt. John Narkin in giving advice to Barney Lucas. I don't think he needs any advice with the way he has played in the second half. This one from exactly the halfway line. Barney Lucas gives it high, gives it long. All of the bar from Barney Lucas and Mealy Gercourt lead by 115 to 
15 points. And seven points for Brendan Lucas. What a contribution. Media Care Court are finishing very strong. The tall, they're all now at it. And there certainly is not just a 15 man effort. All of the players, they're working for each other. They have possession of it. Hooked on the far and the near side of the field. And it is a sideline ball as Sean McCormack couldn't keep it in play. Team Everton are in a hurry to take the sideline ball. Quickly takes it. Up it goes to Roland Madden. Ronan Madden back to John Brahaney. He was held though, and uh, there is the free to Tina Abidinari. And we're 25 seconds into additional time. The goal is the difference. Brian Cunningham. Well, is there a time? There's a lot of injuries. Will he go for the point? No, he'll go low. He takes a deflection. Oh, oh, wonderful save. A magic save. Oh, 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 oh. It was a, initially, it was a magic save from Damien Howe. But it's a goal for Tina Vidalari, and it's 115 to 115. And almost a minute of additional time played. I don't know who got the goal. Certainly Tina Vidalari won't care. They got the goal. Rory McGordon wins the puck out. Rory McGordon. High in. Will it stay in play? Trevor Morton seems to be in. Trevor Morton. Is in. Trevor is held up. Loses possession. Out comes Tina Midinari. Out goes the ball. Could we see a draw? I don't think either side deserves to lose this one. Tina Midinari attacking. The draw tried to win it. The ball in front of us. I mean, a gear court player on the ground. The play continues. The ball goes out over the sideline now. Tommy Fox comes to the sideline. And we have played a minute and 45 seconds of additional time. And what is Tommy Fox going to do? Surely these sides deserve another day, another outing here. Whether it be here in the Duncan Park or wherever it be. Players suffering from injury, players suffering from cramp. They've given it their all. It's been a huge effort, a mighty effort from these amateurs of Teen Abbey Denary and of Melik Aircourt. It looked like Melik Aircourt were on their way, but uh, Brian Cunningham, when Teen Abbey Denary were three points down, got a free about uh, 50 metres out. Winter with a low ball. Damien Howe made a magical save, couldn't control it. And in the follow-up, in come the Tina forward to bury it in the back of the net. The result is that they're level and the play continues and we've now played two minutes and 40 seconds of additional time and it looks like there is is there a free to mini care court there isn't a sideline ball Jer brook is the player that has held up the play through cramp barney lucas there is no appear that's a free to mini care court well well we didn't see the free it is a free barney lucas strikes it barney lucas tries it Dark Air got the chance to win it, but Lucas hits it to the right and hits it over the inline. And I think Tommy Fox will call, and rightly so, because these two sides deserves to do it all over again. He has called, and the two teams, the near neighbours, they must do it all over again. Well done. It was slow to start, it was scrappy for a while, but the second half was memorable, and uh, certainly the players on both sides give a tremendous display of hurling and we say well done and salute them for it and we look forward to seeing them do it all over again August Leshin with the final score 115 apiece from Dermot and from myself from the Duggan Park in Ballislow good evening to you Jeeva Gunny Yuxlaus, a court shot of Fatu Rose, a pork, a pork, a dog on bail on a slow, er, on Saffron Show. Good day, everybody, and you're very welcome to join us here at the Duggan Park in Bandeslow. You're welcome back here for the replay of the County Intermediate Hurling Championship final, and that between Teen Abbey Denary and Mili Kerkort. Well, the Mili Kerkort team had a warm up uh, in the 
back pitch. They're out on the main pitch right now. They're having their photograph taken in the sunshine in the predominantly blue with the white sash. And uh, there, we believe there is a change in the air court team. Uh, Trevor Morden will start, we're told, and Justin Flynn uh, is the player to lose out. The Medic Air Court team is in goals. The team captain, Damien Howe. And uh, then you have uh, Peter Stones at number three. He's the fullback, and Mark McCormack wears number four. Five at right half back is Ronan Narkin. Six at centre back is Martin Narkin. And Mark Ryan wears seven at left half back. In midfield, uh, Dermy Dunn wears eight, but may well play in defence. And number nine is Martin Corkin. Uh, Sean McCormack will wear the number 10 jersey. Number 11 is Rory McGorn. And number 12 is Niall Lynch. 13 is Brendan Lucas. 14, Noel uh, Scraper Kenny. And Kevin Morden wears uh, 15. The panel, and it's a long panel. It is uh, Pori Hogan, Anthony Dunn, Patrick Ryan, John Larkin, Aidan Tracy. Damien uh, Dunn, uh, Shane uh, Feehan, Mark Dunn, Daniel Hogan, Sean Dolan, Damien uh, McDermott, Noel Hogan, Martin Hogan, Ronan Hines, uh, Kenneth Lyons, Michael O'Brien, Patrick Lynch, Brendan Lynch, Michael Larkin, Dara Killian and uh, David O'Leary. The manager is Seamus Ogie Morden and the selectors are Mike Murray, Brendan Flannery, Brian Daly and the medical is provided by Dr. Niall McGordon, Kitman is Jody McAvoy and Richard Ford and the waterman is Bernard McDermott. Well, the Teen Abbey Denari team are coming to have their photograph taken right now. They, of course, are predominantly in green with uh, blue trimmings. And uh, there's a change in uh, the Teen Abbey Denari side as well. Kevin Broderick will start in uh, the game. And I think it's uh, John Sheel that loses out. And here's the full team. In goals is Kevin Devine. Two, Noel Finnerty. Three, Liam Hodgins. And number four, Paul Gordon. Five is Mark Gordon. Six, at centre-back, Carl Cavanagh. And Porrick Sheel will wear number seven. In midfield, it's the Burke brothers, Anthony number eight and Jer number nine. Ten at right half forward is Ronan Madden. Uh, Colin Larkin will wear 12 at left half forward. 13 top of the right is Brian Cunningham. 14 at full forward Declan Donnelly and Michal Durbin wears the number 15 jersey at top of the left and the rest of the panel is uh, Brian Roach, Paddy McHugo, Kevin Maloney, uh, John Brahaney, Declan Power, Andy Burke, uh, Porrick Robinson and Michael Bruther. The management here is made up of Matty Kenny, Tom Avell, Tom Brahaney, Jerry Madden and Tom Maloney and also PJ Kenny and first aid is provided by Tom Burke. Well, Medic Air Court are down to our left, uh, kind of in the front of the stand. Uh, their captain is, of course, Damien Howe. He'll be very disappointed after being off a tremendous save right at the death uh, a week ago. Just couldn't prevent uh, the rebound being buried in the back of the net. He's the captain again today, and he's giving the last words of advice and encouragement to his side, saying, right, lads, we nearly took it last week. We're going to do it today. Well, uh, the... Official today, the referee for the replay, the man from Kilken Iron, Michael Dolan. He's the official today, and he has called, as you can see, the respective captains to the centre of the field, and uh, Liam Hodgins and Damien Howe, the captains of the side. There's a bit of a wind blowing from... Uh, Left to right in the first half, that means that the team attacking uh, the town goal will have that uh, slight breeze advantage, but it seems that Milik Aircourt, Damien Howe, has won the toss and is elected to play against whatever breeze there is in the first half. In the meantime, Liam Hodgins has gone back to inform his players that uh, uh, they will be playing uh, from uh, left to right in uh, that first half and uh, saying, look, lads, uh, we got away with it last week. It's uh, a goal right at the death that kept us in it, uh, that brought us back today. Look, lads, he's saying, don't leave it that late. We're going to do all the way in uh, here at Duggan Park in the replay on this uh, Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, can you stand again, please, for a round of fame.
Well, we've had a minute silence for the later Tom Fitzgibbon. We've had a, a Ron Levine. We know about the changes. We're looking for switches. And the game is about to start here at the Duggan Park in Bonlaslow. And the teams will uh, play exactly as they uh, did a week ago with uh, Milik Aircourt playing from right to left. And Kevin Morn laying it off from the far side of the field. Trying to keep it in play close to the sideline. Looks like uh, Barney Lucas. We... Out uh, the field goes the hand pass to Martin Corcoran. Early nerves from him as he mishits the hole completely and sets up Anthony Burke to send uh, Tina Abbott and Ari attacking down the stand side of the field. Mark McCormack and uh, Mark Ryan goes back. Ryan out over the sideline at the near side of the field. Remember, we had an awful lot of line ball, especially on the near side of the field a week ago. This one is going immediately Kirkwood's way. Yes, remember these two sides uh, finished 115 apiece with that late, late goal. And it was Colm Larkin that finished it uh, for Teen Abbey Denari that has brought them back on this uh, Saturday here to the Duggan Park for the replay as Martin Larkin leaves the ball behind, kicked over towards uh, Kevin Broderick. Kevin Broderick lets it run and the ball is on the far side of the field about uh, 45 metres out. Teen Abbey Denari waits for the breaking ball. Dicklin Donnelly was there to pick it up. Uh, Michael Dolan has blown. That's a free. And the free on the far side of the field. Remember, Teen Abbey Denari got a lot of chances early on that bad wides in the early part of the game a week ago. Right now, Brian Cunningham will try and settle them down with an early score from the place ball. This one, 50 metres out to the left of the post. Very good free taker. Showing, well, showing nerves right from the, the start is a Brian Cunningham has just driven that ball to the left. What a big disappointment there for Brian Cunningham. As uh, Damien Howe shows the ball out uh, to Michael Dolan in the centre of the field to say that he is ready and prepared to puck it out. And uh, he goes right down the middle. The target is Rory McGorn, the strong centre half forward. He's been watched all the way by Carol Cavanagh. The ball breaks, breaks out to the far side of the field, waiting for the breaking ball as Barney Lucas. The full forward line though is cut out and Kevin Devine is out to pick it up and to tear it away. 14 Abbey Denari right here in front of us. Going back to it is the number 10, Ronan Madden. So playing Ladies so deep there was Ronan Madden as he swings that ball right across so Damien. Uh, marked uh, in there is at the cornerback for breaks for Kevin Roderick. Roderick, his effort is blocked down and it's uh, out first with the ball. It looks like Mark uh, McCormack, Mark McCormack trying to tear it. Mark Ryan is there to help as was missed by Ronan Madden and Mark Ryan clears it and blocked. Beautifully added to by Rory McGorn, stopped by Paul Gordon. Paul Gordon walks out, and Paul Gordon into the centre of the field. Lou Sparky in the centre of the field, where it's picked up by Martin Corkland. Corkland trying to find, that is the number 15. The number 15 is, of course, uh, Kevin Morn. Morn drives it in high again. The full forward line is cut out, and Kevin Devine, all on his own. Long clearance down the stand side of the field. Martin Larkin comes across, and uh, two Teen Abbey Denari players trying to win that ball. Out comes Mark Ryan. Mark Ryan has it, goes back to clear and clears it out for Milik Erko through the centre. The joint is there. That's the Trevor. Trevor Morton didn't start a week ago. An out a long ball out the field where Martin Corkin is attacking it but has difficulty in taking it up. Corkin has the chance maybe to open the score. The pass was given by Trevor Morton and Corkin does like uh, Brian Cunningham done. He drives it to uh, the left and out over the inline and wide. Wide a piece, and certainly both teams are finding it hard to settle down. Yes, there's uh, almost four minutes gone. Certainly there was a scoreable chance from a free for uh, Brian Cunningham. That was very scoreable for Anthony uh, Corcoran. Now he gives it away, and Declan Don Donnelly gives it to the hard-working Mihal Dervin. Dervin strikes. He is a uh, little off balance, and there's a second wide now for Teen Abbey Denari. And Michael Dolan has uh, told Damien Howe to hold up for a minute. One of his colleagues needs attention. 
Well, uh, this hold up to Mark Ryan, quite a lengthy hold up. Uh, Mark is okay, but certainly not settling the nerves of either side. We're still waiting for the, the first score. Uh, it looks like that Jeremy Dunn, uh, wearing number eight, is back at cornerback. Sean McCormack out in the centre of the field with Trevor Morton as that in from the start. And uh, Tina Abidinari have a free one back in their own uh, 65 metre line. Well, just inside it, here comes uh, Carol Kavanagh. Long delivery, long, long ball. Waiting for uh, Peter Stones. Kevin Broderick trying to get on the end of it. He seems to be held up. So is the signal of Michael Dolan. And there's another free to Teen Abbey Denari. Media careful conceding freeze in the early part of the game. This one dead straight in front of the post. And what might be in uh, the minds of it looks Ronan Matten seems to be taking this free. Maybe Ronan Matten is going to go low. There's four in the goalpost. Here's Ronan Madden. Up, oh, he strikes. He hit five to back of the net. Ronan Madden, the opening score. A goal for Team Abidinari from an ordinary 20 metre free. Ronan Madden, the goal. <laughs> and uh, seven minutes it took for the first score to come. And it was a major for Team Abidinari. One goal. Uh, to no score. Teen Abbey Denari had to wait until additional time a week ago to get uh, their only goal of the match. They've got one seven minutes into uh, the first half today. And as I say, it's Ronan Matt now that has the ball as well. Circling back and then striking it in. Again, Kevin Broderick is the target. You know, with the head of Kevin Broderick, but he waits for it to break. Then he leaves it behind and... Jeremy Dunn with one hand on the hurley is finding it difficult to clear it. He has support as it came out on the ground and is cleared by Martin Corkin. Up goes the hand of Paul Gordon. Grabs it on his own 45 metre line and out goes the ball towards Sher Burke. Sher Burke swings it down and they stand side the field. Brian Cunningham attacks it. And the referee has blown the whistle deemed. I think it was a throw ball there. And there's a free out to Mili Carcourt. And a free out. And... Uh, Michael Dolan has gone back. Uh, he uh, has the ball, giving it back now a bit further but down the field. And uh, I tell you, the umpire down way down to our left uh, seems to want the attention of Michael Dolan, but Michael Dolan seems to want to play to continue. Well, he's not. He's now going in, I would think, into the umpire. Short conversation it was, I can tell you. And uh, I think it was that he wants uh, two players to be spoken to, and the umpire was doing all the calling there. Again, not helping and settling the nerves of either side, because again it was a big hold up. And I think they play really could have continued there. This time it is uh, Teen Abbey Denary that do the fouling, and the scraper has won the free for Mili Kerko just to the left of the post. Barney Lucas, the number 13. He will take it. Will he be satisfied to tap it over the bar? Will he do what uh, Ronan Matten did down at, done down at the other end of the field? Here it is, and he's done it again. He's done. Was Ronan Matten done? And he has found the back of the net, and the teams are level, and it's a goal apiece. Well, it's a strange game. It's a short puck out, and Mark Gordon all alone on the near side of the field. A long ball down from him. Across comes Peter Stones, puts down the hand effectively. Hand pass it out here, and uh, it's Martin Larkin that clears it. Martin Larkin, the long ball down the near side of the field. A goal apiece, and that uh, goal uh, came ten and a half minutes into the half. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the second guard announcement for the owner of car 05G. So, it's uh, an unusual Please game, as I say. We to wait seven minutes for the first outside. score. That was a, a goal for Keen Abbey Denari for the place ball uh, by Ronan Matten. And uh, three and a half minutes later, Mealy Gercourt from a free of their own. 
finds the teen Abbey Denary back at the net and it's a goal apiece and away goes Declan Donnelly Declan Donnelly wearing 14 showing a greater turn of pace as he sends that ball in broken up though inside uh, by Mark McCormack the tackles are going in and uh, Michael Dolan deems that Mark McCormack held on too long and it's a free to teen Abbey Denary and the free Right in front of the stand is the free and uh, Brian Cunningham. Declan Donnelly really was the one that uh, walked his way through to win that free, send the ball in. It was broken up by Mark McCormack, but he held to on too long and now uh, Brian Cunningham puts it between the posts and Tina Babinari are back in front by a point. One one then to one goal. And as I said, uh, Dermot Dunn back at the corner back as Damien Howe goes way over to the far side of the field. With this one, it's a long ball. Breaks kindly for Teen Abbey Denary. Carol Kavanagh takes the pass and uh, swings it down through the centre. Declan Donnelly wins it. Declan Donnelly turns to his left, hurls it over to the far side of the field. The target is Michal Dervin. Broken down by Jeremy Dunn. Dervin still working. With the ball all over the sideline on the far side of the field. And it's a line ball out to Milik Aircourt. Line ball out. Ronan Larkin. He's the wing back. We're in the number five jersey. Cuts reasonably good ball through the middle. Carl Cavan out in front of Rory McGordon. Gives it to Ronan Madden. Madden, well, went for the score himself, but he has driven it about 15 metres to the left and wide. Matty Kenny, the manager, not too happy. I think he wants that ball to be left into the full forward line. Certainly from that distance out. It didn't happen just there. Damien Howe, certainly the busier of the goalkeepers. This time he comes to the near side of the field. Nye Lynch breaks it down, but uh, Anthony Burke is waiting this time, and Anthony Burke's again, Tina winning the line shirt. Tina Abidinari winning more possession, really. The lead by one point, and they're coming looking for another score. And uh, Declan Donnelly is all alone here on the near side of the field. And Declan Donnelly, with the help of the upright, it goes over the bar. Well, Declan Donnelly will be very grateful that that one went between the posts, uh, off the post, because really it was on his own. And he needed, as I said, the upright to direct it in between the posts for 1-2 to one goal. And again, it's uh, Teen Abbey Denary. Aircourt, like a week ago, finding it very, very hard to settle down early on. Martin Cochran bursts his way through from the centre of the field, but holds the give it to a straight into the hand of Carol Kavanagh. He gives it straight into the hand of uh, Mark Ryan, and he puts it back into the centre. And the ball breaks for Ger Burke, and Ger Burke hurls it down the stand side of the field. Brian Cunningham out in front of Mark McCormack. Holds onto the ball. The hand pass is sold uh, short to Ronan Madden. And out comes Martin Narkin. Gives the hand pass to Sean McCormack. He swings it down here. The near side of the field. Trevor Morden. Well, uh, beaten off it. Beaten away from it uh, initially. And it's a stalemate situation on uh, the 20 metre line. Picked up by Paul Gordon. Cleared away by the Teen Abbey Denari cornerback. Again down the stand side of the field. Mark Ryan is waiting. For the breaking ball and clearing it down to Niall Lynch. Niall Lynch tries to take on the defence. Hand passes it here to Rory McGarn, who's got away from his marker. Rory McGarn strikes and Rory McGarn from Niall Lynch's pass puts it over the bar, the number 11. And uh, just that point between them, 1-2 to 1-1, one, one, and we played 16 minutes and 15 seconds in the first half. Kevin Devine again launching the puck out, really bypassing midfield from both sides as Mark Ryan hurls it here in front of us, all over the sideline. Line ball to Teen Abbey Denari. Mark Gordon, the wing back. Places it, as you can see, just short of uh, the his own 65-meter line. His side, one point 
to the good and gets a good sideline ball. Remember, he dropped one wide from about that distance out uh, uh, last uh, week. This time it's uh, picked up back in the defence by, it looks like, Martin Corcoran. Corcoran uh, broken up by Carl Kavanagh. He's playing very well at centre back for Team Abby Denari. The ball played through the centre. Stop back there, and again looks like Martin Corcoran. He gives it away, and uh, Anthony Burke broken up on side though. Both sides find it very, very hard to hold onto the ball. Just, just giving it from one side to the other as Colin Larkin gives it away, and Martin Larkin clears it uh, for Milik Aircourt. Coming across is Rory McGorn. Goes back to turn to his right, sends a low ball over to the far side of the field. The scraper and Paul Gordon. The scraper gets there first, turns quicker. Shadowed now by Paul Gordon, forced to come out the field, and Michael Dolan. Well, I'm not so sure, but Michael Dolan has blown and deemed that the scraper held on, and there's a free out to Teen Abbey Denari. Paul Gordon will strike it himself. Long one down, up goes the hand of Ronan Larkin, can't hold on to it. Still trying to work his way out, hooked on the far side of the field. And away comes Teen Abbey Denari with Michal Darwin taking a good uh, catch. He surely held up there and uh, he's not. And referee lets the play continue. And it's very close to the sideline on the far side of the field. A lot of hand passes. Comes to Brian uh, Cunningham. Cunningham strikes and Cunningham drives it wide. And certainly the support over there on the far side of the field. Well, it certainly can be heard, and there's a big crowd has gathered in, not as big as a week ago, but I remember we had the minor A uh, final a week ago here as well. But there's a fine attendance in right now uh, as uh, Damien Howe, 1-2 one, to 1-1. One, one. Remember, whatever little win there's out there, it's uh, Teen Abbey Denary that has the advantage of it, and they uh, have a one-point lead. And they have possession with uh, Carl Kavanagh, and he again is surrounded by players and certainly there's no room for a player on any, either side as uh, Brendan Lucas drops the ball but the referee deemed that there was a frontal charge and there's a free in and a chance for Milik Aircourt to level matters well Barney Lucas well no he was in the match there it's uh, trying to get that ball initially he lost uh, Sight of it, he regained possession, but uh, the Tina Abidinari defence came in, there was the frontal charge, and there is, as I said, the upcoming free end. And there you have it, Tina Abidinari 1 2, Mili Kerkort 1 1. Well, uh, Arnie Lucas taking a, a swig of the bottle, as, as it were. He's about to put the helmet back on, and he's also about to take the in an upcoming free. And with uh, 20 and a half minutes gone in uh, the first half, certainly the backs on both sides are enjoying the line share of possession as Barney Lucas hits the free over the bar, and the teams are level. Again, Mark Gordon makes himself available here on the near side of the field, but uh, Kevin Devine elects to go long with this one. And down the stand side of the field it goes. Breaking. And uh, it is uh, Sean McCormack. He's hooked. Well, the hand pass goes back, but again it goes astray. And it's Niall Lynch, and it's very, very con congested on both sides. Certainly find it very, very hard. Uh, to get away from their markers on both sides and like uh, last week you know we were expecting the game to open up and it did open up very much in the second half and you get the feeling that this one will open up very much in the second half as well but at uh, the minute as I said very very close marking Michael Dolan wants uh, the sideline to be taken <laughs> Paul Gordon obliges the ball is picked up by Sean McCormack in the centre of the field. Again, he's surrounded by a number of uh, Teen Abbey Denier players, loses possession and is picked up by Michal Dervin. Dervin takes it along uh, the sideline on the far side of the field. Still in play. And look at all the players that surround the player in possession once again, really going nowhere. And it's a line ball. 
on the far side of the field. The line ball, upcoming and out for Medicare Court. 22 and a half minutes gone, one, two apiece. Nice day for the month of November. And here comes the sideline ball from Ronan Larkin. Mark Gordon gets the cross. Robbed by Niall Lynch, gives the hand pass out to Martin Cochran in the centre of the field. He opens it up to play here towards Trevor Morton on the near side of the field. And uh, the ball is left behind and uh, it's Rory McGorn calling his Trevor Morton. The intention was to find uh, Rory McGorn. Now he goes again. That's surely a frontal charge. And uh, Michael Tolan plays on. And, uh, well, the ball goes out over the in line. And uh, as uh, Niall Lynch was following up, and it goes wide. And a quickly taken puck out. Spotted uh, by Ger Burke. And Ger Burke uh, from his left lets it through the middle. Up goes Peter Stones. That's uh, more like it. Good catch from the fullback. And the clearance likewise out to the centre of the field. Breaking in the centre of the field. Sean McCormack. The referee has he blown the whistle though. He has indeed. And uh, it was uh, after Peter Stones' great catch inside. And uh, the referee, what's he doing now? <laughs> well, Peter Stones played it out towards Michael Dolan, and Michael Dolan wants it played, the free from where Peter Stones had the ball. And now Damien Howe will try and settle it down and will take the free out. Here comes Damien, the captain. Diagonal ball. Changes the point of the play, over to the far side of the field. Great catch by Porrick Shield. Porrick Shield gives the hand pass to Ger Burke. Ger Burke lets the ball do the work. Into Brian Cunningham, watched all the way by Mark uh, McCormack, who slips. And uh, the ball breaks over towards the far side of the field. Colin Larkin, Colin strikes off the run, and Colin Larkin puts it uh, over the bar, and Tina Abidari are back in front. <laughs> and in fact, it was a Michal Durban. <laughs> that uh, broke through there to put that ball over the bar and for uh, Michal Durbin's uh, first uh, point. 1-3 to 1-2. Damien Howe comes this side the field. 25 minutes gone. The hands go up and the ball breaks for Mark Gordon. A nice step, side step away from trouble and plays it up. Where it's caught by Mark McCormack and he leaves it behind him. Kevin Broderick trying to nip in. Broderick has it. Broderick coming away. He's blocked as well. And he's still working hard. Flicked out here to Declan to Dunley. Declan Dunley who found himself all alone for a moment. Then was closed down. But before he could be closed down enough, he puts it over the bar and a second point for Declan Dunley. That's the second time though that uh, Declan Dunley has escaped to the his marker. And he seems to be gone into full forward right now. 1-4-2-1-2. 26 minutes exactly played in at the first half as Mark uh, Gordon clears it out close to the sideline it'll beat them out there Brian Cunningham can't get to it and it's a line out to two Milik Aircourt Mark Ryan he's right in front of the stand Mark Ryan good sideline ball but again it's Mark Gordon and where's Niall Lynch? That's his marker. And Gordon clears it way down to Kevin Broderick. Showing all the experience to get away from a couple of mini gear court defenders. And Kevin Broderick, the bra, has pointed where really was Mark Gordon that set him up. And Broderick done the rest. And uh, that's three points now on the trot for Tina Abby Denari. 1 5 to 1 2. They've opened a three point lead as Michal Durban gets away easily from Dermy Dunn. This is a point is on here from Michal Durban. He strikes it high. He's done well. And Durban has put it over the. And certainly Tina Abby Denari are now finding their feet. They're doing well. They've opened up a uh, four point lead 1 6 to 1 2. And certainly much the better team in the first half. They deserve this four points lead. As uh, 
It's over on the far side of the field, and Carl Cavanagh breaks up another Teen Abbey Denari attack on the far side. Uh, breaks up another Mealy Carecourt attack on the far side of the field. But uh, the ball couldn't be controlled there by the defence, and it's a free in for Barney Lucas and Mealy Carecourt. Well, Barney Lucas with the two. Pointed efforts, Rory McGordon with a point from play, our Mili Kerkort scorers, Lucas with the free, Lucas with the point. Of course, uh, Michal Jarvin with uh, two points from play for Gene Epidemi, likewise Declan Donnelly, two points from play, Brian Cunningham with a point, Ronan Matten of course with the goal from uh, that uh, uh, free as uh, the ball is hurled out and uh, it lands out uh, about uh, 45 metres out. Again, they're working hard to try and get it. As Mili Kirkwood tries to win possession, Martin Darkin tried to come out with the ball. Again, he's blocked down on the far side of the field. And uh, it's Anthony Burke that wins it for Teen Abbey Denari. Puts it through the middle, missed by Jeremy Dunn. Has the time to go back though and pick it up. And Jeremy Dunn now to hand pass it out. The hand pass goes out and Martin Corcoran is waiting and clearing. And again, it's driven over from the far side of the field, over here to the near side of the field. Out comes Haji. Haji reads it, finds Mark Gordon. Gordon coming out slow, though, and Mark Gordon will almost cut a possession, but not. he gets it out as far as uh, Ronan Madden. Ronan Madden gets away from uh, Kevin Morden, and as he did so, though, Hurley went out from uh, the media court corner forward, and uh, there's a free to Tina Bidenari. And uh, Michael Dolan is uh, ticking there the name of one of the Midic Air Court forwards, Kevin Morton. <laughs> 29 minutes and 50 seconds gone in uh, the first half. We had a hold up, of course, for Mark Ryan. Get the feeling there's another two to three minutes at least as here comes the free driven in by Ronan Madden driven high by Ronan Madden and driven over the bar by Ronan Madden 1-7 to 1-3 short puck out intentionally placed for Dermot Dunn and Dermot Dunn clears a long ball held by Rory McGorn and he is loses possession and the ball out again to the centre of the field and uh, it is Martin Nark and Michal Dervin go gets there first Takes his eye off the ball, now comes Jeremy Dunn. Jeremy Dunn is uh, tackled, and there's a free out to Mili Kerkort. <coughs> and uh, Brendan Barney Lucas gone very deep to take the, this free. As we played the 30 minutes, indeed, we played 45 uh, seconds of additional time as Lucas went very deep to take that free, raise it in. Goes to the right, going back is Anthony Burke. He's blocked down. That's the feature of the first half. The hooks and the block downs that has gone in so often by so many players. As uh, Barney Lucas intercepts the clearance. Barney, who stayed outfield after taking that free, finds Martin Corcoran. Again, there's a half uh, block down in. Picked up by Niall Lynch. Gives it back to Martin Corcoran. Martin Corcoran steadies himself, strikes it, but Martin Corcoran very much drives it to the right. And uh, we've now played a minute and uh, 35 seconds of additional time. Perhaps another, maybe a couple of minutes to play in uh, the first half. 1-7 to 1-3, very low scoring. The hand pass uh, given by Ronan Metten to Brian Cunningham. Cunningham takes on uh, Mark McCormack, but not successfully as McCormack blocks it down. Still Teen Abinari attacking Kevin Broderick. Very much dragged to the ground there on uh, the near side of the field, a very needless con free, free conceded there by the Mili Kerkort uh, fullback, and there's a free in, and a chance for Tina Bidinari to get another point. <laughs> well, Brian Cunningham and uh, Ronan Matten have taken it in their turns to take the freeze, and uh, Cunningham takes the ones Nearer to the post. Crouching down over this one. Coming up with the ball. Strike it straight between the posts. And over it goes from uh, Brian Cunningham. Now with two points.
One eight to one three. And Teen Abby Denary certainly deserves that a lead of them. Really Kirkwood and Martin Corker in particular had a couple of bad wides as uh, the referee will blow for half time. A uh, congested game really. Scores hard to come by and uh, well, we get the feeling this one will open up as it did in the second half. We'll do likewise uh, today. It is, the weather is favourable. The teams go to the dressing room. Teen Abidinari hold a five points lead on a half time score of Teen Abidinari 1 8. Mili Kerkort 1 3. Back with the second half. August uh, Tough Archer over at Safarco uh, Dugan on scorer left thumb. Teen Abidinari in cool. August Oak Pincha. Mili Dunokta in cool. August 3 Pincha. Teen Abidinari. Kuik Pincha. Contusi. August Nish. On Dalalatch, welcome back to the second half here at the Duggan Park in Banlas Low. Barney Lucas, I know, is at centre field for the second half. Sean McCormack got up into the forward line. Have noticed any uh, changes on the Medic Airport uh, team? They were first out, and uh, of course, uh, Teen Abidinari will be wondering had they enough done at half time, having played with the wind, the lead by five points. And now it's the turn of Medic Airport uh, to play with the wind in that second half and to go attacking. Well, the effort is blocked down from uh, Mark Ryan, and uh, we're seeing right at the start of the second half what we've seen all through the first half. Uh, the player in possession being closed down and being blocked down as uh, it's uh, very, very tight again to the sideline on the far side of the field. And the referee, Michael Dolan, well, will uh, break it up in the sense that he'll blow the whistle, and there's a free to Mili Kerkort. Barney Lucas, way back in his own half of the field. It's a very high one. It's tearing way out to, to the right. Will it stay in play? It will stay in play. Broken down. The scraper will have seen. Well, he hasn't scored so far. Neither has Kevin Morton. Neither has uh, uh, Trevor Morton in uh, the, uh, of course, uh, air court uh, forward line. Nile Lynch hasn't scored either. As uh, there is a uh, line ball, is it? On uh, the near side of the field, and it's hit outfield, out towards our Barney Lucas, who is calling. He comes up, he strikes, the hands goes up of, uh, the, of Haji, Haji. Well, the second uh, bite of the cherry gets out uh, from uh, the, the danger area, and now it's going to be fully cleared out, as there's a free out to Tina Bidonari. As uh, the free out. Will come from uh, Kevin Devine, and Kevin is there now to strike this ball. And uh, thir little under 30 minutes of regulation time remaining in the 2009 County Intermediate Championship. Mark Ryan going back to clear out. 14 Abidinari kept in play. Niall Lynch. Quick ball, fast ball in, stopped by Haji. Trevor missed by Trevor Morn. Trevor, of course, has been out of the game for quite a bit. Maybe a little rusty in match practice uh, here today as uh, the referee has blown the whistle once again. It'll be a throw in ball. And in goes the throw. Well, not yet. Now it goes in, and again read by Haji at fullback. Out it goes to Anthony Burke, and a long ball up from Anthony Burke. Inside of uh, Brian Cunningham, back goes Mark McCormack, it's a line ball. Line ball would appear out to Mili Kerkort. Before that... Uh, Line ball can be taken as <laughs> looks like Brian Cunningham is getting attention. He's uh, back on his feet and Mark McCormack uh, hits uh, the sideline ball out to the centre of the field. Niall Corcoran again the hand pass is intercepted. Read this time by the number 10 Ronan Madden. Barney Lucas picks up the pieces. A lot of hand passing, a lot of them going astray. Short hand passes that's catching out the player that's uh, uh, well been given to, and now the brawl. He has it in the right corner for position. The experience shows. Hand passes out to Brian Cunningham. He's trying to run at the defence. Two players around uh, Brian Cunningham. Blocks them down on the far side of the field. As uh, 
Again, the block down goes in, and this time it's Brian Cunningham, and he plays it outfield to Ronan Madden, and Ronan Madden has it inside the 45 metre line, plays it short. Broderick lets it uh, run away from him. And this game, yes, hasn't opened up. As uh, again, Aircourt having to go back towards their own goals to clear the ball out to the 45 metre line. Martin Corcoran slips. First touch, let him down, and again you see what's happening. The block down once again goes in, as affected and successful by Teen Abbey Denari this time. A real stalemate and struggle for possession, and certainly the game well, it will be great to see it open up as uh, it's uh, very tight and congested, and now it might open up, but Broderick swinging it over here towards Michal Dervin on the near side of the field. Uses a quick ground ball in for Declan Donnelly. He knew Declan Donnelly was running inside. Gets inside Ronan Larkin. Out comes uh, Peter Stones. Read the danger. Stones gets support. And uh, it's Dermy Dunn, and Dermy Dunn clears it away. Out to the centre of the field. Attacking as Parik Shield. Leaves it behind. Picked up by Rory McGordon. McGordon in towards the scraper and Haji. Haji tried to clear it one-handed. It's right in front of the post. Picked up, it looks like, by Nihilich. Nihilich is coming through. He's hooked as well as he tried to wind up to strike. And that one, and Kevin Morn has to go back for it. And Kevin Morn goes back. Comes out here towards the stand to win it. He's closed down immediately. And uh, it's the number two. That's Noel Finnerty. And Noel Finnerty clears it into the centre of the field. Hill in the centre of the field. For Mealy Carecourt by Martin Corcoran and there's a free to Mealy Carecourt. <laughs> the free is to Barney Lucas. And uh, we've played five minutes and uh, 50 seconds in the second half and we're waiting for the first score. And uh, the game held up a little for an injury back here to our left. And looks like uh, Michal Dervin, the Teen Abidinari corner forward. He's all right, and now we can have the free. And we're looking at Barney Lucas standing over it. Here's Barney. Low trajectory. Is it going to drop short? It is dropped, has dropped short. And it's still in play. Kept away from the danger area. Has it gone out over the inline? It has, I think, gone out over the inline before. It went out over the inline, though. Michael Dolan knows that there was a pushing there by the Teen Abbey Denari defence, and there's a free in to Millie Kerkort. Barney Lucas will take it. And now, can we see the first score of the second half? Sun in the eyes of the goalkeeper of the defence. As Barney Lucas carefully places it. Here he comes with the free. And it looks like to be straight between the posts. It is indeed, and we have seen the first score of the second half. Well, neither side have uh, looked to the uh, substitute bench so far. Going with the 15 to start the game. And that is 1-8 to 1-4 as Jeremy Dunn. Changes the point of the play, swings it over towards the far side of the field. And it is uh, Trevor Morn getting onto it this time. Trevor Morn creating space. Trevor Morn slips for strikes and sends it over the bar. And it was Dermot Dunn that set it up under the joint. Trevor Morn that sends it over. And Mili Kerkut have got the first two of the second half. A three point ball game. Breaks to Rory McGordon. Rory McGordon takes on Carol Kavanagh. Gives it and it's driven in high and driven this time to the left. <laughs> and it was the scraper that drove it in. The scraper wasn't really getting any change from Hodgeen around the fringe of the square and Medic Aircourt had made a switch. Scraper Kenny is out as a left half forward and Niall uh, Lynch is in at full forward and uh, I think uh, Teen Abbey Denari have made a substitution as well. And they have indeed as uh, John Brehany is the player that's into the Teen Abbey Denari side and uh, Kevin Devine strikes uh, the puck out. Teen Abbey Denari then the first to make a substitution. Uh, John Brehany in as I said 
and it is 1-8 to 1-5 as uh, Peter Stones comes attacking uh, the Tina Abidinari at a ball and clears it away for Mili Kerkord. Kevin Warren coming from behind, pushes the corner back. Paul Gordon, and he needlessly concedes the free out now to Tina Abidinari. Taken by Carol Cavanagh, driven wide. Trying to play in Michal Durban in at the left corner forward position. First touch lets him down, picks it a second time of asking, comes in field to strike. Puts it right into the hand, though, of Niall Corcoran, it is. And Niall Corcoran, the midfielder, playing right in front of the goalkeeper as he clears it out to the centre of the field. Rory McCorn waits for the breaking ball. Oh, he played it back, and Mark Ryan had a lot of work to do to win that ball, but he successfully done it and swings it down towards Hodgie. Hodgie, John Brahan is in there. Niall Lynch kicks it across and flips the post, but Paul Gordon is first to react. And Paul Gordon gets it away and clears it out for Tina Abidinari. And the game is beginning to open up a small bit right now as Ronan Larkin puts it straight into the hand of Ger Burke. And Ger Burke opens it up to the far side of the field. A ball for Brian Cunningham to run onto. Brian Cunningham coming in with the ball. He's on the 20 meter, he's on the 13. He strikes it across and faces uh, in front of the goals. Waiting is Martin Narkin. And Martin Narkin clears it down. Going back is Gerberg. Coming out is Trevor Morden. Carl Kavanagh trying to win it. Kicked in by Trevor Morden. Picked up by Sean McCormack. Sean McCormack uh, circling out to the left half forward uh, position to swing it in. In in front of Kevin Moran. Kevin Moran slips. The conditions here at Duggan Park and Bandeslow is very, very good after all the bad weather that we've had during the week, and especially the heavy rain during the night. As uh, Rory McGorn tries to play it in, uh, fast ball inside, picked in, uh, inside by Haji, and Haji hand passes out to Anthony Burke. Anthony Burke, the midfielder, clears it that from, from that ball from the right half back position. The bra is going after it, but picked up by Mark Ryan. He again throws up rather quickly, is blocked down, is hooked. And uh, he needs Martin Narkin to clear it. Through the centre it goes. First to react again is Anthony Burke. Anthony Burke hand passes out to Ronan Madden, who comes back to win at 14. Abbey Denari to swing it over here to the near side. A great catch inside by Jeremy Dunn. Jeremy Dunn's clearance. There's only a half clearance and it's uh, taken by Declan Donnelly in the left half forward position. The hand pass goes across. Jeremy Dunn reads it. Has difficulty in taking it. It's uh, Brian Cunningham who picks it up. And uh, Michael Dolan deemed it uh, uh, the, one of the media air court defenders uh, tried to trip there and there's a free end to Tina Abbey Denari. Brian Cunningham. Looking then for Teen Abbey Denari's uh, first score, and that from a free in uh, the second half, and uh, we have played 12 minutes and 20 seconds in that second half. As I said, Teen Abbey Denari so far hasn't scored in this second half. 1 8 as it was at half time for them, but now they have the chance to get 1 9 on the scoreboard. Here's uh, Brian Cunningham. It's high from Brian Cunningham. You can write it down. It is Tina Abinari's first score of the second half. A point and a third one now for Brian Cunningham. And four points separates them at 1-9 to 1-5 in a long, long ball. Directed down the far side of the field. John Brahaney having to go back. Like yet, Trevor Morden. Short of match practice as well. Injuries to both of them has kept them out in uh, recent weeks as uh, John Brahaney clears it out now. 14 Abbey Denari, broken down by Mark Ryan. Anthony Burke playing in a very deep role in the second half. He's blocked down, but he's lucky. It comes to him, and now he clears the long ball down into the corner. Missed by Dermy Dunn. On to this Michal Durban. Back goes uh, Peter Stones, and uh, Peter Stones ready to flick it out for a 65. Well, the 65 upcoming now. Ronan Madden. The one to stand you over this one. Ronan, who got the goal, first goal of the first score of the game. Is he going to go for the score here? He certainly is going for it, and he gets it. And Ronan Madden has set it over the bar. A 
goal and two points now for Ronan Madden as Martin Corcoran will he try, he's trying to reply straight away from Edie Kerkort and he has and Martin Corcoran well he found it hard to find the target in the first half but certainly in the second half right there he has put it over the bar <laughs> and immediately Mili Court has replied to that Teen Abbey tonight. He's uh, scored a second half with that point for Martin Corcoran. And as uh, Mili Court, I think, are making a substitution. Kevin Devine will puck it out. I think it's uh, number 24 that has come in for Mili Court. And Mark Dunn seems to be the player that's into the Mili Court attack. And it might come now. Down his direction, the referee says play on as uh, Mili Kerkort lost position in the centre of the field. Working hard as the scraper, he hasn't scored. Ger Burke has hooked. And uh, it's uh, Barney Lucas half hooked. Steadying it up and clearing out is Car Carol Kavanagh, Michal Dervin and Dermy Dunn. Dunn goes back, comes out and clears away for Mili Kerkort right down the stand side of the field. Up goes the hand of Ger Burke. Gerbrock comes away from his marker, tries to place it up. Ronan Larkin trying to intercept. Taken by Ronan Madden. Ronan Madden steadies, looks at the post. He has steadied that one with Ronan Madden, though, has put it to the left. Well, Ronan Madden did everything right in the lead up to that effort on the post. He steadied. He looked at the post, the strike though, went as I say, to the left. And Mili Kerkort, they can make another substitution as well. Mark Ryan took a knock very early on in the game and uh, he seems to be the player that has been replaced. As uh, it is hand passed over to the far side and uh, number 13, of course, uh, over there, Danny Lucas, trying to get onto that ball. As, uh, there is a line ball on uh, the far side of the field. It is uh, two Milica Court and Barney Lucas. There was a grandstand fanatic finish. Neither goalkeeper has been really tried and tested today. Neither Kevin Devine nor Damien Howe. And the efforts are coming from out the field and from the freeze in particular. And of course uh, the goals came from a placed ball as it is. One uh, ten to one six, a four point ball game and uh, 17 and a half minutes gone in the second half. And uh, just looking round, well, Sean McCormack has yet to score. Niall Lynch is aside. Noel uh, Kenny and Kevin Morn. He has been replaced, didn't score in uh, that uh, mini care court attack for Tina Abbey. Denary. Well, Colin Larkin has yet to score. As uh, right now it's Mark McCormack that uh, uh, clears, and uh, he clears it long down at uh, the uh, near side of the field. It's uh, broken up though, and uh, the ball cleared away. By Kaya Porig Shield breaks in the centre of the field. Really, it is Anthony Burke. Help uh, from Jer. He's stopped in his tracks by Barney Lucas, but back goes Colin Larkin to win it for Teen Abbey Denari and again opens it up to the far side of the field. Again, playing uh, Brian Cunningham's uh, corner. Cunningham from a very, very tight angle, and uh, it goes. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know, please do not enter the fields of play at the end of the game. It's a Stuart's announcement, the presentation to the winning While team. While Ger Burke was being attended to, we looked at the scoreboard, we also noticed that uh, T uh, Abby Denari had uh, introduced a substitute, Declan Power, is in for Michal Durban into the Teen Abby Denari attack as Paul Gordon is robbed by the scraper. The scraper is held as the free to Millie Gerkart. The free dead straight in front of the post. Well, Mili Kerkort, they haven't led at any stage during this game. They drew with a goal apiece.
they have a chance to level matters for the second time. Barney Lucas dead straight in front of the post. He hits it high. He hits it wide. And there's still a point in it. Bad miss for Barney Lucas. Dead straight in front of the post. And he drove it to the left and wide. And it's still 110 to 19. And that's a effort. The chance of an equalizer came 22 minutes and 40 seconds into that second half. Still a point in it. Attacking the ball is Declan Donnelly. Donnelly did very well. And the referee has blown the whistle. What he has blown for there, I just don't know. But there is a free. And it is in the centre of the field. Barney Lucas, though, won't be upset or perturbed by missing the last one from much closer. Gains right in front of the post. This one is high. This one is dropping short. It has taken a deflection. It has taken off the line. And there's still a point between them. And out comes John Brahaney. John Brahaney between his 13 and 20 metre line. Cleared away by Carol Kavanagh. The ball lands out near the side then on the far side of the field. And Declan Donnelly is first to react. Well, he didn't really look when he was given the hand pass. He gives it straight to Martin Cochran, and Martin Cochran puts it through the centre. Martin will be disappointed he didn't drive that one longer with the help of the wind, and it's taken out by Teen Abbey Denari. Could that uh, free by Barney Lucas be a big turning point in the game? There was a chance for the teams to go level. Right now, he missed it, and Teen Abbey Denari had the chance to maybe to open up a two-point lead up at the other end of the field. Not if Dermy Dunn has his way. Out comes Dermy. Clears it down the stand side of the field. Paul Gordon out in front of Mark Dunn. And Paul Gordon is on the ground. And Paul Gordon... Well, there certainly will be a hold-up in the play. Paul Gordon took a knock there as he came out. Paul Gordon playing a fine game at left corner back in the number four jersey for Teen Abbey Denari. And uh, Paul Gordon is good to see. He's back on his feet and there's the free out to Teen Abbey Denari. The free to be taken by Paul Gordon himself. Here comes Paul. Long ball down into the corner. Peter Stones deflects it down. And uh, it's uh, Mark McCormack beaten to it there, close to the end line. Out comes Billy Kierkegaard with the ball. Finding it hard to get out with that ball. And what will the referee do? Well, certainly, the great work there from a number of Teen Abbey United forwards. The Billy Kierkegaard man could go nowhere. The free is conceded there. The defender held on too long, and the free then to Brian Cunningham. <laughs> Brian Cunningham then, 25 minutes and 50 seconds gone. Will there two be two between them? On this effort from Brian Cunningham, I'm sure if he puts this one over the bar, you'll see a very quick puck out. He has put it over the bar. And four points for Brian Cunningham. 111 to 19. And Damien Howe goes with a long one. Breaks down on the far side of the field. Teen Abbey Denari coming. Out oh, with the ball. In the goals. Mark McCormack attacks it. Hook does he try to clear the line on the ground. And it's driven over to the far side of the field. Declan Donnelly and Martin Narkin. Martin Narkin gets there first. It's a media good coming away with possession. Barney Lucas looks but gives it away. It's intercepted by Anthony Burke. Anthony Burke, this has been a great team effort from Teen Abbey tonight. Burke down, hurls it from his left hand side. Stopped by uh, Peter Stones. Stones turns to his right, has to give it to Jeremy Dunn. And Jeremy Dunn releases it out towards that. Martin Cochran. Cochran is there in front of his man. Then opens up to the far side of the field. One right, Liam Hodge and Liam Hodgins comes out and clears the long ball. John Brahan is down injured. The play continues. Ronan Larkin has to kick. Brahan is still down, way down to our right. The play continues. 
Colin Larkin gives the hand pass into Bra. Bra tripped to see. No says. Well, Michael Dolan, the play continues. And uh, it is uh, Gerbrook going back. Gerbrook flicks it out to Paul Gordon. Paul Gordon played mighty well at left uh, corner back. Broken down by Roland Larkin. Played on by Sean McCormack. Brian is still being attended to. In goes the ball. And it goes to the right and it goes wide. And uh, John Brahaney all the time, as I said, has been attended to and still getting attention down about, uh, well, 25 metres out from his own goal poles. Teen Abbey Denari, 1-11. Mealy Garcourt, 1-9. It's good to see that John Brahaney has the red helmet back on. Picky up Trevor Morden. The two county minor stars. More importantly, we look at the watch. There's 28 and a half minutes gone. In the second half, there's a minute and a half remaining. There's two points between them. Remember, Munich Airport had a three points lead going into injury time a week ago. Teen Abbey Denary got a, a goal to brought the replay. And it's Declan Donnelly. Declan Donnelly winning his own puck out. Going back is Scraper Kenny. Scraper Kenny. Plays it short. Picked up by Niall Lynch. Niall Lynch gives the hand pass to the supporting Barney Lucas. Lucas strikes fast. And that's a good score from Barney Lucas. And Barney Lucas from the left half forward position puts it over the bar. Seven points now for Barney Lucas. 111 to 110. 29 minutes and 20 seconds gone. And Michael Dolan is in the centre of the field. And it looks like there's a, uh, the number of Gina Ferris, Gina Benaria Ferris certainly time. going off. Looks like uh, John Sheel. I, I don't know what really happened there. I think it's two minutes and uh, of additional time that has been announced. And uh, Tina Benaria are making uh, substitutions right now. Kevin Maloney, I think, has come in. Could we see a draw game here? Could we have extra time? We'll have to have extra time if it ends in a draw. Ronan Larkin has it for Mini Kirkcourt. Ronan Larkin drives it up. John Brady tried to intercept it. Breaking out for Niall Lynch. Niall Lynch gets away. Niall Lynch with a chance. Niall Lynch with a score. The team is level. And what a time to get your first score in additional time of, in, in, uh, of the second half. But more, it's a level, it's level at one of 11 apiece. And the ball is with Carol Kavanagh. Carol Kavanagh, that was dangerous enough in a way from Kevin Devine to play the short puck out. Has gone wrong for him. Away goes Rory McGordon. Rory McGordon on the part of the field. Rory forced out. Still Rory plays it, but he didn't really. No, what he was doing with that one? Cut to Barney Lucas. Barney Lucas is well blocked down. Breaks for John Brahaney. John Brahaney clears it. Out goes Martin Larkin. Picked up brilliantly by Brian Cunningham. On to Declan Donnelly. Donnelly is half blocked down. Dermy Dunn has difficulty in taking it up. Dermy Dunn has it. Out comes the corner back. Hand pass goes astray. Well, it's cleared out. And the clearance goes towards Sean McCormack. Sean McCormack slips. Gives it away, and it's taken by Gerberg. And Gerberg lets in a ball, nobody inside. And indecision there, but now Peter Stones clears. And Peter Stones, there's a minute and 40. Uh, five seconds of additional time played. Rory McGoran lets the ball do the work. Let's it long, safely in the hands of Kevin Devine. Devine hand passes it out to Carol Kavanagh. Carol Kavanagh. Keena playing it short. Now to... Hodgie lets the ball do the work, long down into the Munich Airport half of the field. Broken up by Martin Larkin, Larkin hand passes out, collected by Barney Lucas in the centre of the field. A fast ball down towards Rory McGowan, flicks it out to the far side to the scraper. The scraper strikes, the scraper scores! Munich Airport leads by a point. And a very quick uh, puck out. And we look at the watch. The uh, two and a half minutes of additional time played. Milligan got 112. Tini Abidinari 111. 
And what a gift, what a finish like it was a week ago. Is there a point to Teen Abbey Denari? Will Milik Aircourt hold on for a famous victory? Oh, he is excited on the far side of the field. <laughs> and uh, it is a, a throw-in ball. In it goes. It's at the discretion of Michael Dolan. Will Teen Abinari work their way in for a free, maybe? An equalising score. Calling for the head pass is Parik Shield. The chances for Parik Shield. It's high. It's over. For the way back, Parik Shield. The team that are level. And surely will have extra time. Well, certainly the attendants here wants to see more action. They want to see that we're going to get it because Michael Dolan has blown up and it has ended in a draw. And Porrick Shield has become the hero of Tina Abidanari. And it is 1-12 apiece and we have to have extra time. August uh, Tarf Archer over Asher each. Welcome back for yet another uh, time to the Duggan Park here in Bandeslow as uh, it has gone to extra time, 10 minutes uh, each way of extra time. And uh, the players, well, uh, are picking up their positions. And of course, it ended at uh, 112 apiece after. As I said, normal time, and uh, it took Teen Abbey Denari a second week in succession to, first of all, to, uh, of course, make a draw of it a week ago with a late, late goal, and Pori Shield with that marvellous point uh, when Mila Gerko to Nile Lynch thought they were winners. As I said, Pori Shield showed tremendous composure as the second half is on. Nile Lynch badly hits that one in. And it goes to the left and over the end line. What a point it was from the wing back. And as I said, we're into this extra time. And Kevin Devine. And uh, a great catch by Declan Donnelly. Blocked down is Declan Donnelly. Martin Ryan, Martin Larkin finds uh, Ronan Larkin. And uh, the halfbacks combine to clear. Carol Kavanagh collects. Anthony Burke takes the hand pass. Anthony Burke uh, strikes it off at the left hand, opens up the play, swings it way out towards the sideline on the far side of the field. And it uh, comes off the media court corner back. Well, will we ever see the end of this uh, county intermediate championship decider? A draw. A replay, an extra time, and the winners have to take the field again tomorrow. As Ronan Madden takes uh, the sideline ball, the bra attacks it, the bra turns to the left, surely a point on. Hook though has it again, and the Kevin Broderick has Tina Abinari out in front. And uh, it is Milik Aircourt, whatever win there is, is playing with uh, that advantage uh, in uh, the first period of extra time. As the scraper gives it in a chance for Milik Aircourt down at the other end of the field, Niall Lynch, Niall Lynch high and immediate reply, they're level again. <coughs> and it was good combination play over uh, on the left wing that created that point for Niall Lynch, his second of uh, the game. And now, as I say, they're level again at 1.13 apiece. Here comes Sean uh, McCormack. McCormack intercepted as uh, Carol Kavanagh reads it, and Carol Kavanagh had a very, very sound game at centre back all day long. The clearance goes up and is broken up and cleared away. Once again by Millie Carcourt down the stand side of the field. Mark Dunn comes out to attack the ball. Out in front of his man, gives the hand pass further out to Ronan Larkin. Ronan Larkin looks in, hits it short. The ball breaks and uh, it is a Ger Burke. Ger Burke and Anthony Burke. They've defended very well uh, for their size as uh, Paul Gordon and uh, 
Liam Hodgie has been very, very rock solid indeed in the full back line, and that time it's uh, they're there again with through Liam Hodgins for the free out that Paul Gordon will take. And Paul Gordon from in front of the stand, very tall player, and uh, drives it down here. Declan, uh, it's uh, Colin Larkin and uh, Michael Dolan. Well, certainly he has had a long, long day, but as well the referee. And uh, the free is to Ronan Matten and Tina Bidanari. Well, it'll be, of course, their survival of the fittest now. As Ronan Matten swings in that free. He's been very good from the place ball. The ones he has taken is driven them all between the posts, and Ronan Matten has done it once again. Goal and three points now for Ronan Metten as that long puck out. Tina Binary back in front. Is there a response and a reply straight away for Mealy Kirkwood? Martin Corkin has it. Martin Corkin held up now. Forced to go out the field. Gives it out. And it's driven in high. And Mealy Kirkwood has replied straight away. They're back with their point. And the teams are level again. I think it was Sean McCormack with his first score of the day. And the teams are deadlocked, 114 apiece. John Brahani trying to win it in the centre of the field. Breaks for Martin Corcoran. Corcoran, shortish type of ball. Hodgins has done very well at fullback all day. Scraper, can you see Hell noses the referee? And again, it's this time it's Gerberg. Gerberg is hooked. As the ball is kicked across, and uh, the star of the day, you know, in that. Uh, he got that equalising score, Porrick Shield. Porrick Shield is fouled and a free out to Tina Bidanari. <laughs> Carol Kavanagh, will he call back Ronan Matten? <laughs> Looks like he will, and Ronan Matten has come, come back. And he will take the free. But well, this one, as you can see, He's inside his own 65 uh, meter line. Ronan Madden, he can hit them long, he can hit them high, he can hit them accurate, and he has done it from inside his own 65 and Madden over the bar. <laughs> ah, that's some score under pressure there for Ronan Madden and Tina Bidinari lead again. 115 to 114. Barney Lucas trying to create space. A lot of hand passes today. In it goes from Barney Lucas, but this time it goes to the left. And the uh, puck out will come up for Kevin Devine. I think Billy Aircourt have uh, made a substitution. Nye Lynch would appear to have come off the Mealyk Aircourt uh, team. And uh, I think it's number 20 that has uh, come into the side. And Dayton Tracy, I think, is the player that's in for Mealy Kerkor. But it's Tina Abidinari that lead, 115. Colin Larkin trying to add to that score. It slips as he's hit it in. And uh, Damien Howe collects and clears. 115 to 114. Picked up uh, by Declan Donnelly. The hand pass goes astray, over hit, and out comes Jeremy Dunn. And at the corner back, goes away with the ball. Chased all the time by the Athletic. Uh, uh, Brian Cunningham, great teamwork there from Brian Cunningham. The ball goes out on the sideline. Well done, Brian Cunningham. Never give up. And created uh, the mistake from Jeremy Dunn for this sideline ball up to Ger Burke and Tina Abidinari. And Ger Burke will take it himself. High one from Ger Burke. Taken down beautifully. Lovely, lovely control there from Ronan Madden. Out goes the hand pass to Declan Donnelly. The experienced Declan. The hand pass across to John Brahaney. John Brahaney leaves it behind. Martin Narkin leaves it behind likewise. And now there's right over the ball. As uh, it's flicked out by Anthony Burke. Anthony Burke inside. Back goes Peter Stones. Peter Stones inside the bra. Hand pass it back and Ronan Narkin clears it long. Long ball down the stand side the field. Breaks favourably for Sean McCormack. Sean McCormack 
Try to hand pass it. Cloud it out of it. And out comes Paul Gordon and Paul Gordon. Intercepted by Ronan Larkin. He goes after the ball himself. Ronan Larkin drives it high. Nobody inside. It uh, takes a deflection. Kevin Devine watches it all the way. And Kevin Devine clears it out. And there's eight minutes and 20 seconds gone. In the first period of extra time. Teen Abby Denari playing against uh, the breeze. In the first period of extra time. Lead by that point. 115 to 114. As Ger Burke intercepts. And uh, Milik Aircourt attack. And clears it out. Into the... Miracle court half of the field, breaking in the centre of the field. <laughs> Colin Larkin tried to get onto it. It's uh, the ball out of the side, and no, it's kept in play on the far side of the field. And it's uh, Barney Lucas high and over the bar and level again. Well, a couple of players suffering cramp, and uh, Peter Stones was one of them. And that was a little a reason for it. The hold up is Kevin Devine. It's 115 apiece, and we're into now 10 minutes and 47 seconds of that uh, first period of extra time. As John Brahney sends it in, and John Brahney safely gathered though as it drops short into the hands of uh, Damien Howe, and he lets a long ball down once again to stand side the field. Pauly Shield defends it there. Has help from Ger Brook between them to mess up a small bit. And Shield goes back a second time. Shield is pushed though. Good defence once again from Pauly Shield. And a free out to Tina Bidanari. And uh, Ronan Matten. He hasn't missed one all day. Certainly this one is asking a lot though from the number 10. Right in front of the stand. 60 metres out from his own in line. This one is going to drop across the uh, tour towards uh, Brian Cunningham's uh, corner. Well the goals came from freeze. They came early on. And right now it is the bra. The bra turns. The bra hits. The bra scores. And Tina with an early lead. And surely Michael Dolan will call with Tina Bidinari leading by one point after the first period of extra time at 116 to 115 and 10 minutes remaining still. <laughs> well, you're welcome back. The Titanic struggle continues and uh, at least 10 minutes remaining here at the Duggan Park in Bandeslow. And remember, if the winners, if we have a winner, has to do it all over again tomorrow in the Canada Championship. And the prize, I think we haven't mentioned it all day long either, is of course become County Intermediate Champions of 2009. And to do that means gaining senior status in the Senior Championship of uh, 2010. And of course, uh, the losers go home with just, uh, well, the privilege and the honour of playing in the 2009 decider. So really, it's all to be played for. And they certainly have put uh, their life and limb on the line. All the players out there on the field. The 30 that started, the subs that came in. And on into the second period of extra time we go. And it is the scraper. The scraper ahead of Paul Gordon. High from the scraper. Would you believe it? They're level again. And uh, Noel Kinney showing all his experience there to swing down over the bar. 
Whatever little win there is, well, Tina Abidinari will have it in the last 10 minutes. Here's the ball, flicked out to Brian Cunningham. Brian Cunningham holds it up and passes it into the bra. And the bra has Tina Abidinari back in front. Four points for Kevin Frodrick. 117, 116. And it seems that when one team gets a score at one end of the field, the other team comes back up and scores at the other end of the field. And now it's Felix Aircrow's turn. If that uh, trend is to continue to get a score, it breaks in the centre of the field. A good block down there on the number 23, who has been in for some time. That's uh, Shane Feehan. And away goes Tina Abinari, read by Peter Stones, cleared by the fullback, landing in the centre of the field. And it is Teen Abbey Denari that hooshes along to Ger Burke. Ger Burke giving it into Dominic Aircourt half of the field. Out comes Mark McCormack. Mark McCormack is it in, out of uh, play. It is indeed. It's a line ball. Uh, and this time it's Barney Lucas that will hold it up for a little. And maybe it's a cramp uh, again. This time for the Milik Air Court, number 13. Well, Barney Lucas, good to see he's back. And uh, there's two minutes and 40 seconds gone in the second period of extra time. It is 117-116. And it's a sideline ball to Teen Abbey Denari. Ronan Madden. Oh, what a ball from Ronan Madden! Yeah. That's a huge effort! Yeah. That's the worth the money of Ronan Madden! What a point! Fell out in front of the stand and Billy Gerkhardt lead by two. That was some score from Ronan Madden. It's 118 to 116. And it is Teen Abbey Denari and Parik Sheen, and Parik Sheen is held in a free to Teen Abbey Denari. Ronan Madden trying to slow it down as he goes back to take the free himself. Ronan Madden, what a day it has been for him. One goal and five points so far for Ronan Madden. It's high, but it's long and wide this time. Damien Howe now is in a hurry as he landed out this in the field. Team Abinari coming again. Anthony Burke, Team Abinari seems to be finishing that bit stronger. The brawl has been very dangerous. And out comes uh, Martin Narkin, gives the hand pass, dropped by Anthony Dunn, who is into the Munich Air Corps team. Shane, uh, it's Mark Dunn way out the field, over to Ronan Larkin, who is free on the far side of the field, but read by Paul Gordon. What a game Paul Gordon is playing, and Paul Gordon, long ball down, is getting his up, up uh, as I said it has to. Players are getting tired, and Munich Air Corps have to concede the free on the far side of the field. No, says the referee. Out comes the defence, Jeremy Dunn clears his lines, and Jeremy Dunn, Swings it through the centre. Out comes the scraper to attack in front of Kevin uh, Paul Gordon. Gives it to Sean McCormack. McCormack in a more favourable position. But Sean McCormack has driven it to the right. Well, scores are not, well, it's not that easy at times to get them. And certainly, well, 
Sean McCormick will be disappointed with that one. Here comes Kevin Devine. We look at the watch. This a five minutes and 20 seconds gone in the second period of extra time. 118 to 116. Here's Jerbrook. Lovely sidestep from Jerbrook. High from Jerbrook. All the way for Tina Vinari and Jerbrook. Quickly from uh, Damien Howe, 119 to 116, Team Evidenary lead by three. Ronan Madden is coming, blocked down on him. Martin Coughlin hand passes it back, driven forward by Anthony Dunn, Paul Gordon, try to win it, out comes Kevin Devine, pulled out by Ronnie McGarn, takes a deflection, won by Haji, Haji hand passes out to Parik Shield, Parik Shield. Leaves it up behind initially. Paul Gordon is there to support. What a game Paul Gordon has played. Gives it back to Parry Shield. Puts down the head. Burrows his way out with the ball. Robbed of possession. Close to the sideline. Here comes Aiden Tracy. He's blocked down and the ball goes out over the sideline. And a teen Abbey Denardy player. Well, cramp all over the place now. I'm not surprised. These lads have given a tremendous, huge effort. It's an amateur game. But these uh, lads, what they have given for their parish and for their club today. Well, it's certainly an it is here to see it and believe it. A mighty effort from everyone out there on the field of play. And it's a pity as well that somebody has to go away as a loser in the end because this has been a fantastic battle between two neighbouring sides. And, uh, well, they'll be attended to. They make a court man back now on his feet. It's getting dark. I'm not surprised. It's, for a long, it's a long day here at the Duggan Park in Banlaslow. <laughs> and it is Teen Abbey Denari 119, it's Munich Aircourt, 116. It's a sideline ball, it's Barney Lucas. This one drops short, it's dangerous. Hill and picked up by John Brahenny. And Brahenny, the clearance goes out, held by Barney Lucas, driven back in again to the DNG area. It's a pull down, it's saved by Kevin Devine. Out the goalkeeper as he picked it off the ground. He has, and it's a free into Billy Carcourt. <laughs> free into Billy Carcourt, dead straight in front of the post. And we'll look at the watch. There's eight minutes and 15 seconds gone. There's a minute and, uh, well, 45 remaining. I think uh, the Munich Airport man has to go low. This is the big one now. Surely, if this ball goes into the back of the net, well, we don't know what's going to happen. But certainly, if Team Abidinari says this one, you get the feeling they're going to go on and take the honours. And it's Barney Lucas. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the goals. Here's Barney Lucas. No save. Save. And I think it was Hachi out for a 65. Well, the 65 is upcoming, remember, a week ago. It was similar to this. It was a free to Teen Abbey tonight. It was a brilliant save from Damien Howe. And uh, Colin Larkin was at the end of it, about in the back of there. But this one that drops in, it goes out to the left, is kept in play. And is Teen Abbey Denari going to hold on? The ball is still in play. It's 119 to 116. It's nine and a half minutes gone in the second period of extra time. Three, the difference. And there's a stalemate situation. Kevin Morton tried to win it. He's away though from the goals. He's out near the sideline. The hand pass goes back. It's a, it is given inside. It's Mark Dunn across in front of the goal. And up comes Tina Abidinari. Ronan Larkin blocks it. Trevor Morton tries to win it. Tina Abidinari trying to come out with that ball. Again, it's a stalemate situation. It's suiting Team Abidinari. It's close. It's tight at the minute. Out to come once again. Ball on the far side of the field. Declan Dadley is back there. Look at where he is. 
after this marathon game back in his head but he's back forward and Lack and flicks it in hell blocked what a block down it was actually about away goes the clearance out into the centre of the field it goes on goes Tina Midinari the ball close to the sideline we look at the watch we played the 10 minutes the ball does a free to Mini Gerkort it's in the centre of the field and it's all down to this one Anthony Corcoran will take it 190 to 116 and turns the player down on the far side of the field can't see who it is well in fact it's Declan Donnelly what a game here Declan Donnelly has played now it's Anthony Corcoran Anthony Corcoran here's the free it's dropping in it's dropping in it's a hell and out comes Haji and Haji is held and a free out to Tina and surely that's the winning of the day and the year and the championship for Tina Midenari free out 119 to 116 and 11 minutes and 50 seconds played in the second period of extra time well these the winners here have to do it again tomorrow remember there's 52 weeks in the year there's uh, 104 weekends and surely it's a bit much to ask uh, well after this marathon that the players have to go out and do it again tomorrow in the Connor Con Con Championship as is a free in to Tina Midenari and this is surely the insurance one And the free is uh, for Brian Cunningham. The stewards are getting ready. The Teen Abbey and Harry supporters, I think, at this stage, are getting ready as well. But the big question is, will there be celebrations tonight? <laughs> Remember, if they go on to win it, they have to play again in a few hours' time. Here comes Brian Cunningham. All heroes today on both sides oh, and Brian Cunningham, it's all over surely because that one goes over the bar oh, and it's he's all over officially as Michael Dolan blows the final whistle. Seven, five points for Brian Cunningham. The championship for Tina Abbey Denari, 120 to 116. You'd have to say hard luck to Mealy Kirkcourt, to the players, the panel, to Ogie Morton and to the selectors. What a marathon day, what a marathon year. You have to say congratulations to Tina Midenari, to the players, to the panel, to the manager, Matty Kenny, Tom Abel, Tom Brandy, Jerry Madden, Tom Maloney, and PJ Kenny. And you have to wish them well tomorrow. Well, mind yourselves tonight, lads, and go on and win the Connacht Championship from here on. As uh, certainly it's been a marathon year. It's senior status, of course, for Tina Abbey Denari as well in uh, 2010. And... Uh, well done to everyone involved and on a final score here at the Duggan Park in Bonneslow, <laughs> Tina Abidinari, the intermediate champions of 2009 in a final score of one goal and 20 points to Mili Gerkurtz, a goal and 16 points, a mighty day, a mighty effort, Agus Leshin, you Dermot Agus Wimpsha, Shosa Porco Dugan, Tanona Mahagiv Galair. <laughs>
Just if you're going to have your attention. Just if we could have your attention for a few moments. Just if we, if we could have your attention for a few moments. Uh, I've, I've, been asked to, I've been asked to ask all the players, would they give us just one more half hour? That's all we need. You were so good. All here in the stand want another half hour of it, so maybe we should clear the pitch and let you out again, lads. Well done. Lads, you're... After, after two hours and 20 minutes, there's absolutely nothing between those teams. I've never seen two, two teams play with such honesty, such commitment. And, you know, you're an absolute credit to your clubs, lads. And i just like to salute Aircourt, Milik Aircourt. You did very well. You know, a few balls went wide there in you, lads. But for that, it might be another draw. So well done to Aircourt, and I'd just like to compliment you on a great sporting game. I just... I'd just like to thank our, our match referee, Michael Dolan, and his officials. He did, he did a magnificent job out there. Well done to Michael. And I'd just like to thank all the referees for their work throughout the year. Thanks very much to the Reds. It, is, it has been raining all over the country for the last few days, but I don't think it rained here in Banlaslow. And and I'd just like to pay special tribute to the Dugan Park Grounds Committee for having the pitch in excellent shape today and last Sunday as well. And I can tell you that they, those lads are working tirelessly all week to have things in order. So well done to uh, Willie Ward, to Brendan Dolan and all their staff. Thanks very much, lads. It's always a pleasure to come to Venice <laughs> I'd, li I'd like to thank our, our uh, match sponsor, Michael Finnerty of Finnerty Plantire. He's been very generous to the board for the last few years, and I'd just like to thank him for his loyalty and support. And just say to you, lads, you know, if there's any fields and trouble over locked or anything like that, you know, Michael is here, and uh, give him a shout. So I'd also like to uh, thank uh, the Silver family for... for presenting the cup in Mick Silver's honour. And I would just like to uh, ask Edel to announce man of the match. We have, we have one man of the match and we have two trophies for him, so it's Christmas come early. So I just ask Edel to announce man of the match and to present her trophy. I'm not responsible now for picking the man of the match. I didn't pick him. But the man of the match goes to Carl Cavanagh. for sponsoring one trophy and for to Edel on behalf of the Silver family for uh, sponsoring the other one. I suppose today belongs to Tina. He fought two and a half hours and well done in the end. He came up trumps. At this stage, I'd just like to wish you the very, very best tomorrow against Belly Harness. Uh, I know the games are coming fast and furious, but you seem to thrive. You seem to be much better today than you were last week, so I assume that hopefully you'll be much better tomorrow than you were today. And I hope, I wish you every success. I'd also uh, wish you the very best at senior hurling next year. Welcome on board. And, you know, that's your place. 
<laughs> so, uh, without further ado, I'll just uh, like to present the cup on behalf of the board to the winning captain, Liam Hodgins. speech ready that's so, um, but on behalf of the Teen Abs and Hurling Club, um, first of all I'd like to thank Aircourt for the sporting game for the last two days. You're a tremendous credit to your club, on it we did everything to do to win the match today. So that's cheer cheers for uh, Aircourt. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. hip, hip. Uh, just on behalf of myself and the team, there's a few people that I'd like to thank. First of all I'd like to thank the club, all the delegates. On, on behind the scenes, the treasurers, the juvenile club, the coaches, down to this wouldn't be possible without you. So this is for you just as much as it's for us. And I say thank you very much. <laughs> to the sport that we've got over the last, since the sports we've got since we joined five or six years ago, it's very, very much appreciated. It was rocky times in the beginning, but this is the just award. So to everyone that believed in the club, everyone that worked hard when the club started, and everyone that puts in an effort week in, week out, bringing young lads to training, thank you very much. And finally, I'd, I'd, I'd like to thank the management of this team. This wasn't just a one-man team or anything. There was a huge backroom team here. First of all, I'd like to thank Betty Kinney, the manager, the amount of effort he put in. I would like to thank his two selectors of Jerry Madden and Tom Brahey. Thank you very much. And there's numerous people on the backroom team there. The Tom Maloney's, Ambrose Hodgins, Thomas Havel, uh, Jerry Riley, and a good few more. If I forget someone, I'm sorry. But lads, thanks very much. Tom Burke. Tom Burke as well. We have a big match tomorrow, lads. Again, we're still in the Connacht final, so we'd appreciate your sport down in that league. And we keep the wheels going at this club now when there's a buzz around. So thank you very much. I'm joined now by two of the successful management team of the Teen Abbey Denary side that won the County Intermediate Championship. First of all, I'm joined by Tom Brahini. Great year for Teen Abbey Denary. A oh, very good year. We're all very excited about it. And um, there was an awful lot of work put into it, and uh, we're delighted with the outcome. Of course, it was a, a ding dong battle all day long, both in the, draw, in the first day and in the replay. Indeed, it was. And uh, it was very late in the, in the first day that we got the goal um, to make a draw of it. And we were delighted to get the chance again to take on Media Care Court for the second time. A week later, we worked very hard during that week and we, um, uh, we looked at the videotape and we'd had a, a lot of meetings and um, the second day was very tight again and it came to the end again to Media Care Court got the point to go ahead and we had to get a point back again to draw it. So then after that then we went to extra time. Tom, you're an awful long time involved, very passionate man, and of course you were a link yourself with uh, the 87 team. I was indeed. In 1987, Tina here won the intermediate uh, final, and um, uh, I was delighted to be part of it, and it was a great success at the time. And of course, uh, your son John is involved right now as well. Yeah, there is um, a great link now between the two teams. Um, um, you have Kevin Maloney on the panel there, and Michal Dervin is on the team there, Ian. Uh, Ian Dervin played for us and Tom Maloney played for us. And, um, but nowadays I think that they have a lot more training done now and uh, the quality of hurling is better nowadays than in our day because they, there's a lot more drills being done and they're putting a huge effort in now. And um, I'm delighted with the success at the minute. Would you compare the game as faster now than it was uh, in 87? Yeah, it's much faster now. It's, um, uh, that's, that's mainly due to all the training they're doing. 
they are doing a lot more training sessions and doing a lot more quality training than we were doing. And uh, I, I think that uh, they, they have got an awful lot of uh, good training and got it underage, at under 12 and under 14, under 16. There has been um, a great set up here in Teen Abbey, the Nairi, at the juvenile level um, for a, a lot of years now. So uh, it's all paying off now. Tom Brandy, thanks very much indeed. Well said. I'm also joined by Jerry Rocky Madden. Great day down in Ballinasloe. Great day for Teen Abbey, the Nairi. We were delighted to come out and tap and and they have their own victory, and we're delighted to have won. And of course, you had a link with the team as well, Ronan Madden, a fellow called Ronan Madden was playing in this side. He was, yeah, Jerry. And I suppose in 89 you interviewed myself after getting that scrape and that goal in, and uh, history nearly repeated itself. And I was saying to Matty Keeney, the head of the Tribune was, it was me 20 years ago, was a torch to every denier. This year it was Colin Rackham was a torch to every denier. I was thinking there was something in that, and we were lucky, it was a lucky charm. Of course, it was Billy Carecourt this year. It was Pertumna back in, in your time. It was, Ger. It was Pertumna back in our time. They have come a long way since, but we hope to be up there at them now in four or five years' time. Well, you are up there already. You're in senior status in 2010. Yes, Ger, but we have, a lot, we have a lot of work to do all the time. And I suppose the standard of senior hurling has gone a lot higher now than it used to be back in 20 years ago. There's a lot more training and a lot more ball work. In our time, You'll be looking to hit 10 balls in an evening train, and now they're hitting 200 balls. So it has to be done a lot better nowadays. Of course, there's an awful lot on the panel right now as well. We have a good panel. We have 24 or 5, and they're all fit to take their place. We didn't think it a couple of years ago that we'd have 24 or 5 to pick from, but thankfully now we have. And there was a lot of them tried out this year, and they came through it. But Frank called us, and hopefully there'll be more of them tried out next year. Well, Jerry Madden and Tom Brahaney, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thanks, Thank you very much, Joe. And joined now by the team captain, Liam Hodgins. Liam, you're the man that lifted the county cup. Ah, yeah, it was a great honour. You know, um, any of the panel, any of the 24 could have done that job. You know, I suppose that was the easiest job in the day, like the hard work was done on the pitch. Um, it was an honour to be up there, but um, at the end of the day, you know, the 24, 25 lads have been a huge effort all year. Um, all the captain does most of the days is just, you know, toss the coin and maybe give, see, say a few words, but... You need leaders on the pitch, and I think today we do, we, or during the year, we a lot of leaders. Of course, uh, the airport were a fine, uh, big, strong side, and they're putting in fine, big, high ball in, in your direction. You're feeling them very well. Ah, yeah. Well, that's like you, you play in different positions, like you have different responsibilities. Like if you're, if you're in goals or in the full back line or the corner back line, you know that's your responsibility. You're, the, you're there to defend. You know, if you're in the full forward line or corner forward or any six forwards, you're there to score. So everyone has the responsibility in each each part of the position. Um, but yeah, no, things went well for us and it was good, it was a nice, nice win. And of course you had a great understanding in there, both uh, Kevin and the goals and the full back then, and indeed all the backs in general. Ah yeah, like Kevin Devine, he's very experienced, he's, he's around for a long time, um, like he's there for 20 years, like he played in a, an intermediate final back in 1989, played in a senior final in 98 and 99, and then 2009 another intermediate final. And like, the players respect him and he, he understands the game and he understands the reading of the game and his calls, like people listen to his calls and you know, it's very good. And he brings the players along with him. People have that confidence when he's there in goals. I'm sure these players put in a huge effort throughout the year. I'm sure they're not all living or working locally. I'm sure there are some of them travelling some distances as well to come to training. Oh, yeah, I think that's, that's the way society has gone now. Um, you have lads in college in Limerick and you have lads away. Some lads in, in Galway and you know, they, they travel good, just good distance every week in, week out. And that's the way society is. Like People are going to have to get their education somewhere else or they're working to get work somewhere else and they have to put in, the, put in the effort to get success and if you look at any of the teams that get the success they have to put in that commitment. Well it's very obvious from looking at you on the field there was a great bond among all involved. Ah yeah it's like I suppose winning brings that you know when you're winning you know when you get to a county final and you've, you've came through the group stages and things have gone well and it's the same for Aircourt. Aircourt have developed a huge bond during the year no, no difference to ourselves and it was a matter of getting over the line the team that wins the county final they'll say will have the biggest bond but I think this year, I think the youth and the, and the older lads, you know, bonded well this year. There was a bit of, you know, gelling to go on and it worked very well this year. Like where probably in the extra time in the matches, the, youth, the young players really came to the fro. And, and then you had the players like Kevin Broderick, Kevin Devine, Noel Trinity, Carl Kavanagh, who was a little bit of experience, you know, you know, show their experience, you know, in the second half and, and in extra time. What were you saying to the lads in the dressing room, first of all, and well, especially uh, at half time in those matches? Um, well, I suppose in half-time in both the matches, like, 
we had hurled well in, in both halves. Um, probably the first day we hadn't scored, like we were very dominant. We'd missed a lot of chances. And I knew Airport was going to come at us. You know, no matter who you play in any match or a county final, they're going to get their spread. Um, but it was, it was to hold that, like hold that dominance as long as you can. And if Airport did come at us, not to let them fully control the match. And then we would get our dominance again. No, we lived on a, a thread line for a good few times, like in, on this, over the 60 minutes. And on both games, we were behind. But it showed the character of the team you know, to come back. We never doubted ourselves. You know, we said all year that we would play to the final whistle. And that's what we did. And finally, you must be surely, surely, you must be looking really forward to the coming year. Ah, yeah. You know, you, you, sometimes you'll be, be looking forward, and then other times you'll be saying, Jesus, if I have to go out and mark some of these inter county hurlers again, you know, but that's what we're there for. Like, that's, that's what you train for. You know, I mean, we'll have, we'll have enough of years looking at it, and we'll have enough of years standing outside the fence, you know, shouting in. But, you know, when, when you're there and you're playing sport, you know, you have to be playing against the best, and, you know, you have to set yourself up against the best. You know, at the end of the day, they could be looking at us and saying, well, Jesus, they have the same problems as Mark and us, but you know, hopefully it'll be a good year for the club. You know, we need to keep it driving on, and we, we hope to keep it in, you know, developing the club going forward with the younger players that's coming. Liam Hodgins, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thanks very much, Eric. I'm joined now by the number one, the goalkeeper himself, Kevin Devine. A sweet year for Kevin Devine. A great year, Ger. Yeah, very, very satisfying after many years of many years of toiling and 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 lots and lots of effort. So very, very satisfying. Very, very satisfying. You gave it a little rest for a while and you came back in uh, 2009. Yeah, I was absent for two years, obviously. You know, you'd gone to the well a lot of times and never came back with anything. And um, I suppose went into kind of like a semi-retirement for two years. And um, then this time last year, um, Matty approached me and obviously I had a fair idea what the, the management setup was going to be. So I knew it was going to be a fairly professional outfit. And I had seen the, the guys in the... In the quarter-final last year, playing again Aircourt down in Kalimer, and uh, they performed quite well on the day. So, I suppose when you've been at it all your life, you always have a bit of an appetite for it. So, um, I didn't have to think about it for too long, um, and I was, you know, delighted to come back in in, in February of last year. Of course, uh, you knew the full back line. Well, you knew uh, Noel Finnerty and uh, Liam and the others there. Uh, they were regular to you for a long number of years. Yeah, I've played behind by those boys for, for, you know, for many, many, many number of years, you know, going, going back right into the mid-90s. Um, but obviously, you know, um, some of the younger guys have, have come into the team, you know, Paul Gordon, Parik here beside me. And, and, and like defensively, we had, I think defensively, we had been very, very strong. And that was definitely a focus of the management team and, and, and the whole panel, you know, to keep our concession rate as low as possible. And we... We analysed that throughout the year after every game um, and we tried to keep our concession rate down as much as we possibly could. So I think defensively we were, you know, I think in, in any team you have to be defensively fairly strong. So um, hopefully that was, that was the way that it turned out for us during the year, you know. Of course we spoke about uh, 89 a little earlier. I believe you were involved back then as well. Yes, I was. In, in, in 1989 down in Kalimer we won, uh, obviously, Abbey Denairi at, at that time. Uh, we won the intermediate title in 1989, so I was in goals that time. And um, yeah, 20 years later, it's it's sweet, very sweet, very sweet. Well said, uh, Kevin Devine. And joined also by one of the younger defenders, Parik Shield. Parik, I remember you playing at the number four jersey for quite a bit. You moved out to number seven this year. Uh, that's right, there, there. Um Well, early on in the year, I the management decided to move me out to wing back, and I suppose maybe I got a bit of a new le lease of life out there. And um, I suppose I was happy with my consistent consistency of performance, and but I was more used to playing in the corner all up through my career. But thankfully, I was able to this year to move out to the wing and play hopefully to what was an acceptable standard. Of course, you had a good understanding with Paul Gordon as well in your younger in all along, and he was just behind you. Uh, he was, yeah, yeah. Paul's a, a great player, like, and uh, he had no worries when the ball went back went back to him. He could attack it at full pace, like, because even if you missed it. New Paul was there to clean up, like, and even you had Liam and uh, No Finnerty behind me as well with the experience, and Carol as well beside me, and that, that was a great help, like, and it helped our defensive solidity this year. There's one big question I have to ask you, and that's about scoring. Mm -hmm. now, usually, you know, Bex doesn't score a lot, but uh, I know a Bex that scored a wonderful point. His name was Barry Teal, and it uh, brought the game into extra time. Uh, I don't know what that now, but I think that was, that might have been looked now, but. Um, yeah, thankfully it went over. Like uh, I didn't really think about it at the time, but I suppose looking back on it now, I 
I didn't know the significance of, of the timing of the game. I, I thought maybe we had another minute or two to play. I thought maybe if there was a puck out, we might have another chance to score. But I just, I don't know, it, it was instinctive really. Like I just went for I did a small bit of space and maybe we wouldn't get another chance again. But I remember I missed one, uh, an easier chance against Leitrim in the quarterfinal replay. And, you know, maybe they, on, the, on the day like another day, maybe I would have missed that one like and scored the easy one. like but. Thankfully, that the important, one, the important one went over. You'll be going forward and calling for a lot of passes in the coming year. Uh, I don't know about that. No, that could be a bit of a. Uh, that could be just a one-off that point now. But hopefully, hopefully now, if the if we all play, put our shoulders to the wheel in senior, like that, um, we'll we'll uh, have the forwards to do the scoring, and maybe I'll stay back, like and mind the house, like, because I'll just have to concentrate on my own job, like. Of course, getting back to your own uh, line and the halfback line, you had uh, Mark Gordon and uh, Carol Kavanagh with you. Uh, that's right. Yeah, there was a great bond there between us. Like um, the line was um, consistent all year, really. Like and uh, Mark and Carol had great years too. Like you know, Carol really gave good leadership. Like at centre back, he was outstanding in the final and deservedly got man of the match. And Mark too. Uh, Any time there, he come out with the ball, bust, bursting out. Like you know, there was no one that was going to stop him really. Like and. The two of them were really consistent this year, like, and thankfully, uh, thankfully, it paid off in the end. Anyways. Kevin Devine and Parry Shield, thank you very much indeed, and well done. Thanks, sir. Thanks. And joined now by one of the successful midfielders, Ger Burke. I know, Ger, the work rate of Ger Burke in the drawing game and in the replay was something to see. Well, that's why I, don't know, I tried my best anyway, and they couldn't really. I suppose some let's say they're late, but. How did you get hammered yourself and your brother Anthony in the middle of the field? That was supposed to be nice to win it beside him. Like John Brahney was there for before Anthony came in, and, and like John was injured and he missed out on the final. Anthony was injured earlier in the year, and you know it could have been either of them. I ended up hurling beside, and it was it was just tough on John Brahney that he got injured coming up to the final. I noticed you just didn't play midfield. You covered an off lot of ground. You covered for the half back line, and he went up forward as well. Well, I was probably playing more defensive than anything really, so I was like, um, it wasn't really my, uh, uh, it wasn't really my role to be shooting pints. I'm not the most accurate from a distance anyway, so I was more just told to keep, to keep the ball hit into the forwards, and that's what I tried to do. I noticed as well that uh, you played an awful lot yourself, and Anthony, you played a lot of low ball into the forwards. Yeah, that was the instruction was to hit the ball in low from the midfielders, get the ball, get onto the ball, and. Hit it in low with forwards inside they can score and that was their role and our role was just to try to get it into them. Our, our role was probably a bit easier than theirs. Well, thank you very much, Chair. Well done. I'm also joined by Colm Larkin, one of those forwards. And Colm, you've got a very important goal. Well, I suppose there was fairly important in the overall scheme, like, but it could have been any one of the six forwards that got it really for a finish. Like, you know, um, I think it was Ronan Madden won the free. And <clears throat> he got a great flick to the ball in the air and I just happened to get in the rebound and... Thankfully, we got another day out with an, uh, another shot at uh, winning the final, you know. I'm glad I got it now, I have to say. Well, say it was a tremendous, uh, initially, it was a tremendous save by Damien Howe. Well, he's a great goalkeeper, like, you know, and he made, Ronan got an absolutely amazing connection with um, Brian's free, um, and he made a super save. Like, I wasn't surprised he made a save at all. I was kind of expecting him to make a save, you know, like that. So, like, Damien's a fantastic keeper, and to see him produce a save like that was no surprise. Was it like playing around with Declan and others in that forward line? Well, seeing as Declan's been there since 1970s, you know, it's nice to be able to give the old lads a hand, you know. Um, <coughs> uh, no, it's great, like, you know, it's like there's some unbelievable experience there in the forward line. Like, Declan has been around for, what, eight years now at this stage. Kevin Broderick has been there for a while. Brian Cunningham has been there for a good while. Um, you know, like, if you can't learn off hur hurling beside lads like Declan, like, you know, it's, it's, you'd learn off, you wouldn't learn off anyone, you know. And, in fairness, he's been very valuable to a lot of the younger fellas in the team this year by just you know, giving them leadership and providing words of inspiration and encouragement to throw them. If say, things aren't going wrong, you know, you know that Dickens is going to be there to provide a bit of uh, backup or support to you, like, you know. As for yourself, is wing forward your favourite position? Um, it is, yeah. I have to say I do enjoy it. Like, and I suppose it's, it's a place where you can do an awful lot of work. Like, you know, that's, that's our role in the, in the unit is, is work rate, really, you know, that just to, I suppose, provide a link between Jur in the midfield and uh, the full forward line. And our, our role is, is somewhat similar to Jur in that we just, you know, work as hard as we possibly can. 
win the ball and shift it on into the air, into full forward line, because you know, we have some amazing lads inside there that will do damage. If you just feed them the ball, um, they are going to damage like the Brian Cunningham, Ronan Madden, Michal Durvin, you know, Bra, like them. You just, we just win the ball, give it to them, and they'll do the rest of it, like, you know. Tom Rackland, thanks very much indeed. Well done. Well, we spoke about Declan, and the Declan we're talking about, of course, is Declan Donnelly. Congratulations, a county medal. Thanks very much, Jerry. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great to win it. As Colm said, I've been around for a while, been part of this team for a long time. And when Abby and Ari were on their own, I played in two county finals as well. And uh, we were unlucky we didn't come up on top in those days. But thanks be to God we did this time now, and it's great to win the medal with all the lads involved, you know. Well, you were wearing the number 14 jersey, but you were out around the 40, you were on the wing, you were out around the field, and, and, and indeed at some stage you were back in the halfback line. Well, I suppose uh, a jersey is, is a jersey, and it's great to have it, but I don't think it means a whole lot when you're, uh, when you're playing in a forward line with, that's designed by Matty Kinney, you know. Um, I think the six forwards this year were designed to uh, set up um, more or less as a unit, and any one of us could play in any different position at any time. So I found myself wing forward, half forward, or centre forward, maybe full forward, maybe corner forward. But it's great for the likes of the, the Michal Dervins, Brian Cunningham, Kevin Brodswick, uh, young Ronnie Madden, Colm. Like any one of us could just find ourselves anywhere at any particular time. And it was just great that we were all able to slot in and do what we had to do. And thanks be to God, like, you know, we just came out on top at the end of the day, you know. And of course, now you're looking forward to senior in 2010. Yeah, again, it's great to be back, senior. You know, I've played a few seniors, senior games myself in my day, and uh, I'm a few years older now, but looking forward to the challenge again next year and looking forward to getting in against the likes of Pertumna, Loch Ray, Gart, all these guys, you know, see, see what they're made of. And just goes to show you how versatile you are. If my memory serves me correctly, I think you were back in the half-back line then. Well, I suppose, yeah, in 1999 I played in uh, played half-back, and uh, 2000 I played, um, so 98 I played half-back, 2000 I played midfield. I think Brendan Madden then, about two years ago, had a great idea of moving me into the forwards. So I don't know where that's going, but it looks like I might be there for the, <laughs> for the, for the end of my days, you know. And of course, uh, you added in with a couple of points as well in those games against uh, the Mealy Airport. Yeah, well again, look at, I mean, I just in the right spot at the right time. Uh, it was a lot of hard work was done by the boys. I mean, Colin flicked me out one pass. Uh, um, you know, it was, just, it was just a lot of hard work done by the six forwards. And, uh, and the quality of ball that was being sent in by the two midfielders in our half-back line was just unbelievable. Like, we were getting quality ball, it was bouncing in front of us, so our, our job wasn't that difficult, really. Like, when you, when you get the good ball, it's, it's easy enough to take care of it after that, you know. Declan Donnelly, well said. Thanks very much indeed. Congratulations. Thanks, Chair. And now I'm joined by the team manager, Matty Kenny. Long year, Matty. It was made longer by the postponement, and finally it got going in the Dugan Park in Banderslow. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't think it was, you know... Uh, it was that long a year, like, you know, because when you're in the middle of a year, as you know, you know um, you're going from one game to the next or one training session to the next, and you're always analysing and planning and putting things in place and going back, checking what, what has worked and what hasn't worked. And, you know, myself and the management team, we'd always lost to work on. So, you know, sometimes we thought the, the time was going too fast, to tell you the truth, you know. From a neutral point of view with that game, it looked, you know, a great game, in, you know, went from end to wind, and um, certainly both teams were very fit. Yeah, both teams were very fit. Um, you know, from our own point of view, like you know, we had a lot of work in, uh, in this year, and uh, you know, with a lot of youth on our side, like uh, uh, in the county final, like with, with four guys there that, that, that's minor, actually two of them, two, in the, two of them under 18 and two of them under 17, and uh, you know, a good shot of lads there that's under 21, and then with the experienced guys as well. But you know, as a squad, with, with you know, with, with 24 on our, on, our, on our panel this year. Uh, but they work very hard for one another, and individually they work very hard. And, and you know, they got themselves into good shape. They were hungry for the hurling. They were hungry for success. Success, and um, you know, they deserve what they got out of it at the end of the year. What was going through Matty Kinney's mind in the drawing game, deep into injury time, a goal down? Um, get a ball up the field. Hopefully that we you know, that we, uh, we get a, a break of a ball and that we might get a goal to get us back into the game or, or, or to save the day. And uh, the ball broke out. Uh, Ronan Madden actually won a good ball in midfield. He was fouled and, uh, and Brian Cunningham out to take the free. And I said to Brian, I said, Brian, you know, I said, you, 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 need, you need to you know, keep it in play. And he, he drilled in a, a, a good low free that Ronan got a, a touch to and Colin Larkin finished off the, the rebound and uh, it kind of shocked the court and kind of gave us back the momentum and um, 
you know, it's, it, it, it brought the game to a replay. And, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're lucky enough. Like, when you, need a, when you get a goal in injury time, like, it's, you know, it's not something you can guarantee you're going to get. So, you know, obviously we were delighted to get the second day out. Of course, the second day out was, was a similar type of game. Yeah, both, both games, like, you, know, I, you know, just going back to the first game, you know, we were in control in the first half, didn't, didn't control the scoreboard enough or didn't score enough. And, you know, we, we, we thought, you know, that we, we left the game there for air court. We didn't put them away. And uh, in, this, in the second half, you know, the, we won a lot of high balls. So we worked on, on you know, um, Gordon there, caught a lot of ball and, and, and Lynch. And we said, you know, we, we tried to, you know, keep the ball lower and, and compete stronger in the air when the ball was in the air. And, and take the game to airport again the second day, and we did that. And uh, we went in at halftime, five pints up, and we came out in the second half then. And um, you know, we, we controlled the game again for the next 10 minutes, and that was the period that hurt us because you know we had we had the possession, but we didn't score. And uh, you know, I thought we should have put airport uh, put the game out of sight, and uh, but we didn't. And airport came back then, you know. They're, they're, they're a traditionally strong team and, you know, they've good heart and, you know, they came back and asked us questions again of us and, you know, uh, I think it was a draw match going into injury time, like it was two minutes into injury time when Aircourt went into the lead and uh, we, we had to get uh, the equalising point again by Forex Shield just before the third minute of, extra, uh, of injury time. So, you know, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of hurling done in injury time of the, of, the, of the second day also, you know. Of course, that took you into extra time and I noticed in that extra time, especially in the second period of extra time, you seemed to have the legs on your court. Yeah, you know, uh, you know we, we, we actually, you know, when, when the normal time was over, uh, you know, I'd say it was the first time of the year I kind of got emotional because, uh, you know, when Porrick Shield put, over the bear, put the ball over the bear, I, I, I said to myself, we're now going to go on and win it. You know, and up to that, I wasn't too sure that we're ever going to win it. But I, I, I knew we'd taken it from airport the second time again. And uh, I, I knew our, our, our fitness and our youth and our hunger was going to go on and win the extra time. And, uh, you know, when, when we came together in, in, our, in our group and when we talked again to the players, you know, we said, look, we're going to go on now and win from here. And, and, I, and you could see the belief in the team that they were actually going to go on and win from there. And we just need, need to make sure we didn't do anything foolish or anything stupid and, uh, and, and, and do that. And, you know, I, I think the, the confidence was drained out of Aircourt in fairness going into the extra time, or into the, yeah, the extra time. And, uh, and as you said, we went on one is, uh, look, we looked a fresher team in that extra time. And of course, uh, you probably drove that message home to the players. You know, you, you got the goal in the drawing game, in the original game. You got the point uh, to take it into extra time. You felt that you had one hand on the goal. Yeah, we, I, I, I thought we did, yeah, but like, you know, you, you, know, you, you can't guarantee that because their court showed good character, but yeah, I, 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 going into the, into the extra time, we, we felt we were going to win it, but then obviously if you're going to win anything, you have to be confident then, you know, if, if, if there's, if there's self-doubt in your mind, it'll come back to haunt you, like, and so you, know, you obviously have to be stay positive and, and stay confident, and, you know, and, and if you do, the breaks will go away nine or, nine or ten times. Of course, the final whistle blows, and you had four points to spare. And you know, in, in any other situation, you'd celebrate. But it was a bizarre maybe, result in a way in that you were the county champions, but you had another game, a very, very important game, coming up within 24 hours. We had, yeah, um, we had, and we spoke about that on the on on on, on the Monday night previous. And I made the point as I look at as we're preparing for a county final on Saturday, and uh, we knew at that stage that the winners would have to play again on Sunday, and you know. The management team and myself we were saying, look, we don't hear any talk about you know, the Connacht final, whether it should be played or whether it shouldn't be played or where it was fair or unfair. I said, you know, we, we'll deal with whoever wins, whether it's Aircourt or ourselves, can deal with that problem come Saturday night. And, uh, but obviously, when we got back into the dressing room, then we had to deal with that issue. So, you know, we, 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 um, we, we, str we stretched down, we warmed down, tried to get the bodies re uh, recovered at a meal that, that evening. And we came back to Tina and uh, celebrated with our fans uh, until about 10, 10.30 and then got the players home and got them ready for uh, the uh, Connacht final on the Sunday. A couple of more points I'd like to make with you. There's a number of young players coming through as well in the club. There is a number uh, of young players coming through. Like, you know, the, the, when, when, on the Connacht final, so when we got to the Connacht final the following day, you know, with a number of injuries from the previous day, and that, that gives an opportunity then, you know, to, to the guys who hadn't played a full role on, 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 on the county final day, 
they got an opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to, to play them, and, and, and it was a case that happened to But our squad was, was, was strong, and so was a squad of 24 uh, all, all year. So we were to bring in some of these players, the Declan Powers, the, the, the Andy Burks, the, you know, uh, the Kevin Maloney's, uh, the John Brannies, you know, the, you know, John and Kevin, you know, John was injured, and Kevin, Kevin played all the matches with us. And uh, Andy Burke, he was on our team early on in the year, and he, he, he started in the kind of final, and he played really, really well. Uh, he scored six points from play, and uh, that shows the depth, the depth of our, of our squad. Um, and you know, other years we hadn't that depth, like you know, but but this year we have taken with 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 a good good panel of players. And as you're right, you know, there's a lot of them very young, and then we have a few extra young guys coming through again now this year. They'll be coming of age for the Connacht or for the the All Ireland series. In, in uh, Shane Maloney, Park Brahney, and um, John Whelan. Like, so we, we'll be able to bring these guys into our panel now say, for, for the start of 2010. And um, uh, thankfully, we're not losing out anyone at the other end. Uh, you know, the Kevin Devines and the Liam Hodges and Kevin Brothers and Declan Donnelly, these guys are still an awful lot talker. So, you know, that's going to make our squad stronger. And, uh, you, know, you know, we have a lot to look forward to in 2010. Um, we, we now prepare for this All Ireland series. And uh, we also pre prepare for our first year up uh, senior hurling. And as you yeah, know, just before I go to that, uh, Matty, maybe we, we, we'll finish up with that. Uh, I'm sure it's not just Matty Kinney that was on the side, and there are other people there as well. And I'm sure there are people you'd like to thank. Oh, definitely. Like you know, when, when you know, when, when I took over the team this year, when I was asked to you know to manage the team or or, or, or set up managing the team, you know, the, you know, Tom Branny uh, and Jerry Madden and Tom Avel uh, came in and out me. Now. Uh, Tom Abel was involved for the last few years. He, he's a very, very good uh, 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 organiser. He's done, an, he did an awful lot of work this year, organising challenge matches, organising the pitch, organising uh, you know everything that you know the administration side of things. He, he did unbelievable work. Tom, Tom Branny and, and Rocky were, were also you know very, very involved in the training. But when we met early on the year, we, we still felt that our management team wasn't strong enough. So, so then we approached my, my own brother, P.J. Kenny, and Tom Maloney, uh, two very, very good hurling men. Like, you know, like P.J. has been involved with Tina, or Abidinari down through the years, and Tom Maloney uh, is also involved hugely with Tina, as well as both of them being very good hurlers. Uh, you know, they great knowledge from the hurling side of things. They're also very, uh, you know, very good from the coaching point of view. So, so that kind of gives us our, 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 our management team for, from a hurling or or for a match, match, match situation. We also had then um, um, Ambrose Hodgins, he, he, he looked after all the gear for us, he looked after the ice bats, he looked after the hurls, he looked after the balls, he did, he did all that work for us. And, and that's the type of work that, that, that you, need, you, need, you need being done. And it takes the pressure off, off the, 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 us that's out on the pitch doing the coaching when you have this background management team doing that work for you. Mike Maloney then, he looked after the jerseys for us every day. And you know, we also got huge help from our secretary and our chairman, Ali Robson and Mary McHugh. You know, the, the support of us throughout the year. And uh, when we used to train during the week, uh, we'd get the lads back from college, back from Limerick and back from Galway. And Marion and Ali had organised, have teen signs organised from there every evening after training. And you know, them small things are the things that makes a difference. And uh, you know, uh, it's the small things that, that, that helps you win at the end of the day. Finally, Meshi, talk to me about the future. You have an All-Ireland club semi-final to look forward to, and of course, senior status. Yeah, we have, and uh, you know, you know, we, you know, we, we, we take a, we, we took a few steps up the ladder this year. Like you know, um, we, we you know, our preparation was 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 good. You know, the commitment and the hunger by the players is is top class. But you know, we got to we we got to get our players more conditioned now. Uh, you know the, the challenges of senior hurling is, is going to be is going to be greater than the than the, than the faced in, in the intermediate championship. So we've got to prepare the guys for that. But you know at least we have, we have a willing squad of players. We, you know when you have, when you have players that's willing to work with you and we're willing to work with them. You know then then we can we can take them steps together. And um, you know we we spoke about you know after after say uh, a couple of weeks after the uh, the, the Connacht final and then the, and the county final we have to prepare now in the new year for this all ireland series um, you know it would be it's a great honor if 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 we if our club could could get to play in crop park uh, it's it's every player's dream as a hurler to play in crop park uh, when, you, when, you, when you hear the likes of the legendary joe cooney 
and, and Henry Shefflin saying the highlights of their careers is representing their, their clubs in Crow Park. It, it shows you know, the, the prize is there for us. And, um, so so that, that is a nice bonus to get out winning the intermediate. Then on the real business side of things, we've got to try to settle into senior hurling. Um, we, don't, we don't want to be in a position where you know, our, 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 uh, our, um, our work is, is going in or, or is going into um, uh, trying to avoid relegation. We, we want to kind of establish ourselves quickly in senior hurling. Now, we realise that's not going to be easy, and we realise we've got to do a lot of work and get in the foundation work in January and February. But um, as I said, we have a willing squad of players to work with, and uh, you know, we want to develop this team on. Um, there is a high standard to meet, meet out there. Pope Dumna set a very high standard that's way above any, any, anything that is currently available in the other senior teams in Galway. But that's the bear. That's where we've got to get to. And we're under no illusion, uh, illusions, like, you know, we're not going to get there in months or, or maybe it's going to take a number of years. But we, we know what the standard is and we know where we have to work to. And hopefully, you know, over the next couple of years, two to three years, we'll get there, Jer. Well done, Ashley Kinney. And we'll all be behind you and we wish you every good luck in 2010. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank, Thank you very much. And joined now by the club chairman, Ali Robinson. Ali, a great year to be chairman of the club. Yes, yeah, a fantastic year for the club, all right, you know. I suppose all the conversation and talk around everywhere you go at the moment or during the year has been about the weather, or the economic situation or swine flu, I suppose. But, you know, this success was brilliant, it, you know, not just for the team and the management, but for the, you know, the parish and for the community. And it's certainly lifted spirits and it's been a brilliant year all around. And on top of that, I suppose, there's a, a great air of expectation and anticipation of what's going to happen next year as well. Of course, uh, business like this is very expensive as well, and you know, a lot of funds are required. Well, I suppose the, the average hurling club it costs somewhere in the region of 60 to 70,000 each year you know, to run the club, and in the current economic climate, it's you know, more and more difficult to raise that kind of money because you know, the flow of sponsorship that used to be there for clubs is no longer available. So clubs are depending to a huge extent on the local lottos, and, you know, we're very lucky in this club that, you know, we have a, a lateral committee that's very much like McNamara's band. They're very small in numbers, but, you know, they're doing fantastic work and bringing in something in the average of seven or eight hundred euro per week. And on behalf of the club, I'd sincerely like to thank that particular group, you know, for all the work that they have done, as well as all the people in the parish that support our lateral uh, every week. And of course, injuries in the modern game again, there's a lot of them as well, and they are expensive. Yeah, and I suppose we have, you know, particularly earlier in the year, we had a lot of injuries, but in fairness to the management team, you know, they took every, I suppose, every precaution to ensure, and, you know, they took remedial action to make sure that all of those injuries were treated, and, you know, players were sent to... Uh, you know, to various medical people uh, to get them sorted out earlier in the year. And if that hadn't been done, I don't think the year would have been as successful. And in addition to that, we had Tom Burke with the team there all year, who was looking after first aid. And at the latter stages of the competition, uh, Jerry Riley came on board as our physio. So, like, there is, and, you know, in spite of all that, there is a very substantial medical bill, you know, not just with our club, but with every club uh, every year as well, you know. And, of course, uh, there's your, your fellow officers as well, uh, the Secretary and Treasurer. Yeah, well, I suppose the, the main thing that happened, I think, anyway, I think just the most important thing that happened in the club this year was, you know, prior to last year's AGM, um, you know, we sat down and we, you know, to see where we were going in the, for the coming year. And Matty Kinney was approached with a view to taking over the management of the team. So from the initial discussions, a discussion document was put in front of the players and in front of the club members at the AGM. And a totally new structure was put in place. And the important thing to make that successful that everybody had to buy into it, the players first of all in particular, then the management team, the officers of the club and the club membership. And you know, luckily that happened because I think it was um, Jerry Lucknan I heard being interviewed during the week and he said, you know, the old hurling philosophy that, you know, players play and managers manage and administrators look after the administration, that that's, 
you know, now confined to history. It's a matter of everybody working together, like the players, the management, the officers, the field people, everybody working together as a team. And that was the structure that, you know, Matty put before the, uh, the uh, members at the AGM, and I think it was the key to success during the year. Of course, it was a very bad year as well, weather-wise, and Matty Kinney was the manager, and he had a number of selectors, and I'm sure there are a number of people that you'd like to thank on this front. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the players themselves, you know, for the contribution and commitment that they made, particularly younger players who were at college, you know, that came home and were so dedicated to training. And I'd like, you know, in particular to thank the management team and, you know, Matty, Tom and uh, Jerry and their extended team. And I suppose I've heard a lot of descriptions of the efforts that was put in during the year particularly in relation to Matty Kinney. Some were saying you know, that he was very dedicated. Some were saying that he was driven. Uh, some said that he was fanatical. But I think that these are the type of ingredients that are necessary to achieve success. And I think that that was borne out in the end of the year. And I think if we hadn't that type of driven management, we wouldn't have had the success that we've had. So I'd like to thank uh, that management team and the players you know, the people that were involved in the lotto as well, as I mentioned already, they made a huge contribution. I think another uh, key group of people within the club have been, you know, the two guys looking after the pitches, Michael Broderick and James Hodgins. And then we had the people on the various schemes here under the leadership of Sean Larkin. Because when you come into train, it's important that you have fields prepared and ready for matches. And, you know, the, 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 there were an awful lot of people, you know, the, the supporters, the, you know, we have to recognise the contribution that they made as well to the supporting the lotto, to supporting the team, I suppose, parents that were looking after, you know, the expenses of getting students home for training. So it was a real community effort, really. So on behalf of the club, I'd like to thank everybody that was involved, you know. Well, of course, success is bonding, and you're very much bonding at the minute, and the amalgamation has been a real success story. The amalgamation has been a tremendous success story. Um, I suppose it started off in a, at juvenile level, and it has you know, developed from there. And I think from here on, it's onwards and upwards. Or that's certainly, you know, there, there's absolutely no problem from that point of view. And uh, I think it's brilliant the way the whole thing has bonded together. Finally, I'm sure you're really looking forward and what is your message for 2010? Well, my message for 2010 would be that, you know, I suppose a lot of people, you know, maybe not a lot of people, but some people have said, look, we've won the intermediate, we're going up next year to senior. I hope we avoid relegation. But that certainly wouldn't be my way of looking at next year, and I'm certain sure that it's not the way the management team would be looking at it either. That we see this very much as a beginning rather than an end. You know, up playing senior hurling is where anybody that's serious about hurling would like to be, whether you're a player, whether you're in management, whether you're an officer in the club or a supporter. It's playing the game at the highest level. And, you know, management, the players and the officers sat down last year to put a plan in place to win the intermediate this year. Um, I've no doubt that in the next few weeks we'll be sitting down and putting a similar plan in place for next year. And you know that plan won't be without, won't be just about trying to avoid relegation. What we'll be doing is setting targets that, you know, that we're going to be up competing with the big boys over the next few years. It won't happen overnight. But you know, if you look at the Pertumnas and the Athlone Rise and the Sarsfields, they all started at that level. And you know, it's about a, a professional approach, committed approach. And you know, if the management and the players and everybody says as driven and as focused as they've been last year, I think you know, in the next three or four years we'll be competing with the top teams in the county. Well said, Ali Robinson, Chairman of the club, thanks very much indeed for talking to us.